this conference is going to be empowering youth, education, careers, and global connections. So there is a virtual gathering today on Google Meet, as you can see, and there is another um, in-person gathering tomorrow in Addis Ababa. So we're, we're having a, a dual virtual and in-person gathering for US, uh, Ethiopia. So we are very excited for for this year's you know, uh, conference. We have lots of amazing guests uh, who, who are gonna speak to us about many different topics. You know, how you work with youth in Ethiopia, how do you foster collaboration uh, in Ethiopia between youth in Ethiopia and also and also uh, people abroad. And we, we will be talking about remote job experience of, of some, some of you in Ethiopia and with some examples. We'll bring some um, <clears throat> prolific guests who had a long relationship with universities and colleges in Ethiopia and, and, and as well as you know uh, some relationship between universities and the US and also in Ethiopia. So we are very excited for to kick this off and uh, um, welcome everybody and we're gonna have fun. Uh, and I have, my name is Beric at Kindo and we are, uh, I, I am part of an, a new group in the US who is helping Yes Ethiopia. And we have established an organization which we will introduce soon and in, in the United States. With me, I have Jizita as a co-host this morning. And then in the afternoon, we will have uh, more of the Yes US uh, members and board members come in and speak to us and they will lead the discussion. Tizita, anything you want to add to that? I apologize. Um, I was in mute. Um, hello, everyone. I am Tizita and I'm uh, uh, the secretary of the board of directors uh, for the US office, uh, which is actually um, ready to collaborate and, uh, you know, go far uh, to help our uh, youth. Um, and our main purpose is just to make sure to support our Yes Ethiopia, which is actually located in Ethiopia. Um, uh, I am Tizita again, and I am um, I'm working at PepsiCo Gatorade as a supply chain quality control and assurance resource and supervisor. Uh, and apart from that, I am a natural helper uh, with the Immigrant Welcome Center, which is located in Indiana, Indianapolis, Indiana. Um, well, thank you so much for joining us. Um, we're so excited to have you all. Thank you so much. Um, I'm just gonna take you to our first presenter uh, or speaker who is uh, Fakadu Retta. Uh, Fakadu Retta is, um, he is the CEO of uh, Yes Ethiopia. Um, he's actually, um, currently pursuing his PhD um, at the University of Nebraska, Lincoln. Um, he's also a former staff member of Hawassa University. Uh, well, Fuke, uh, welcome. Uh, it is uh, your time to go ahead and present about, you know, Yes Ethiopia and our mission um, in collaboration with uh, Yes US. Thank you. And you have seven minutes. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Can you see my screen? Look, if you're not able, I can share the screen for you. Why, why don't you just- uh... I'm sharing my screen. Can you see my screen now? Hello? Yes, now yes. Okay, thanks so much. Thank you very much. This is Fakadu. And uh, thank you to Zita. Thank you, Dr. Barakat. This is our second annual conference, which is uh, focusing on youth empowerment, education, careers, and global connection. So like just a reminder or a kind of uh, uh, why we do this conference. The first conference was conducted in Hawassa in collaboration with Hawassa University. Uh, just for you to see uh, who were our guest speakers. Ishatu Mellese, Anna Hailu, and Kibret Abebe at that time. This was in 2022, February 19. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't do in 2023. So. 
That's why this is the second annual conference. And during this presentation, I'll focus on the progress of AC Ethiopia and what we would like to do in the future. So uh, in short, we'll discuss about why AC Ethiopia was started, why this conference is needed, and then what are the major achievements of AC Ethiopia, what challenges we did encounter, what are our future plans. Yep. No, I'm sorry. sorry. So interrupting you. If you're switching the slides, we're not seeing that. Oh, sorry. So you're sharing a different screen. Oh, you couldn't see it. What about now? Oh, Dr. Barakat, can you share my screen then? Okay. Just tell me to, to progress through the slides if you Yeah, want. please. Okay, just come in. That's later. <clears throat> so as I said, like the major aim of this conference is for you, for the audience, for our partners, and also for the young people in Ethiopia and for the, you know, uh, organizations for us to know about East Ethiopia. Yeah, next slide, Dr. Barakat. There is a slide. Yeah, this part. So why East Ethiopia is needed? That's what I'm going to discuss about also. Why this conference is important? And also, what are our major accomplishments in East Ethiopia? what challenges we have encountered, and also our future plans and acknowledgements. So next slide. Yeah, this is our logo. This is the logo of Ethiopia. We say we are blue and white, like the clouds in the sky. Like, uh, yeah, there is some uh, reasons why we choose these colors, but for now, I don't go to the details. Let's go to the next, next slide, Dr. Barakat. Yeah, and Ethiopia for those of you who would like to know exactly what Ethiopia means, why EWS Ethiopia stands for Youth and Education Support Service. Ethiopia And next slide. Why Ethiopia? If we understand the why, I think it's very easy for, for you to understand why we are doing this conference. The first biggest problem like the fire that started in Ethiopia is the unemployment of our students and the second is about education quality i'm very sure most of ethiopian families those of you who follow the uh, recent developments also the issues of education in ethiopia is uh, very big you know ethiopia have a very big population very big young people a lot of education institutions are being opened but we also understand there are some challenges, especially in relation to connecting the graduates with the job market. So that was the first kickstart, which pushed me to start this institution with, I mean, uh, this mission with my friends, especially at Hausa University. And next slide, you could see uh, in Hausa University, I was head of the Department of Human Nutrition. And one of the biggest unemployment in Ethiopia is from the nutrition program. So. A lot of my students, the best students, the gold medalists and the likes were asking like, teacher, what should we do? There is no job. And it's very easy to say, I did my best. You have a gold medal. I did teach you. And then it's up to the government. It's up to the other institutions to get you a job. That's a very easy, you know, sir, to give. But uh, that's not the way forward. We have seen after we started Ethiopia, not only for nutrition graduates, we also managed to facilitate employment even for medical graduates, for engineering students, for social science, natural sciences. So we continue to the next slide, Dr. Barakat. The, yeah, we start small. We say a person is a country. As is Ethiopia, our target is on a single person. A lot of people would ask, you know, there is big unemployment in Ethiopia. There are more than millions of students without jobs. What do you do? My, I'm not in this world, you know, to answer the problems of all the millions. But one person, if we can start from one person, if we could help one person, then we are building a country, you know? All of us are individuals. There is no, uh, you know, person that represents five people at a time. All of us are human beings, single person. Together, we build a country. So for us, the target is the, the single individual. The next slide, I'm going to move you first, Dr. Barakat. And this, this slide shows like one of the reasons what uh, motivated me to start Ethiopia is the book by Robert Kiyosaki. Please get and read this book. 
it reminded me really to think a little bit out of the box. And uh, this was in 2019 when we're uh, coming to United States to uh, visit the University of Nebraska. I was reading this book. Business as usual, for sure, might not be the best way to go. So, yeah, go faster, Dr. Worker. The next slide. There are a lot of slides. And this slide indicates who is unemployed in Ethiopia. You see? Technology, out of 100, about 30% are technology students, medicine, health sciences, social science is only 8% out of 10. You know? That's like one of the uh, pictures which shows us what should we do? Who is unemployed? Me coming from agriculture side, I might say, ah, agriculture is not the most unemployed in Ethiopia. But 10 out of 100, you know, this is only the study conducted online. Some of fielders, maybe 80% don't have jobs. On next slide, also, this picture shows you where are jobs located in Ethiopia. On February 2, 2024, 72% of jobs are only in Addis Ababa, which means there are only 28% jobs outside Addis on social media or on the internet. So where are our students going to get jobs? What should we do? We should find ways so that, you know, we make sure at least remote jobs or jobs outside Addis Ababa are also easily accessible to the job market, to the, to the job seeker. And we continue. So why is this conference? The first thing is we want to launch Yes Ethiopia, which was started here in the United States. So Yes US is formally launched today. And also we want to promote Yes Ethiopia. A lot of young people still don't know about Yes Ethiopia. And most employers, most organizations don't have a clear idea about Yes Ethiopia. And we want to also give this platform for young people to speak their agendas to their partners and to the uh, global community. Let's say PhD students uh, have to do at least one international conference to graduate. But who is giving them this conference? What's the cost of attending a conference? Can our students get the chance to present in international conference if we don't give them a way, like show them the at least some of the you know ways you could do conferences online? So we want to attract partners like Ethiopian banks and the scholars in the diaspora, we want you to work with us. And also those in Ethiopia, we can do a lot of things together. So this conference is really learning by doing. You know, the team in Addis Ababa tomorrow, you will see, we could manage to do a very good uh, coordination just working remotely. Uh, next slide. So Ethiopia is a legal entity established in May 27, 2020. And uh, it's uh, led by a board of directors of seven, seven people. And let's continue. There is like a, a certificate just for you to, to know that this is a legally established institution and we have a mandate to operate in all parts of Ethiopia. Let's go. Next slide, Dr. Brecker. So these are the founders. Initially, it was me and my brothers. It was a very challenging time when we started this Ethiopia. It was time of election and a lot of people were not comfortable, you know, to just join. So the best way to start with the friends and families. That's what I tell to one of my, some of my students. You know, you don't have to uh, go far. Just think of your friends and your families. There are a lot of stories coming and yes, Ethiopia is one very good example. And uh, so our board of directors on the next slide. Yeah, these are our board of directors, and these are people from our high school, you know, people who trust what we do, and those who understand really where we come from, and wh why we do what we are doing, you know. Uh, yeah, sorry, our brother, Fakad Fatana, he passed away last year, so now we are going through uh, a kind of uh, restructuring, yes, Ethiopia. Uh, our brother, Gatenet, also moved to Canada, and I'm also here in the United States. So we are kind of going to uh, restructure and reorganize uh, the Ethiopia team, but a lot of work is being done. So I really give very big credit to these brothers and sisters because they really helped us a lot by the time when we are not confident even about what we're thinking about. But thanks to God and these friends, 
now we have a lot of stories to tell. Seven minutes, ten minutes is not enough, you know. If I keep <laughs> on telling you the whole day, we have a lot of stories to tell about Ethiopia. So let's continue. I'll walk you faster. So the major aims of Ethiopia, as I said, is education, quality, and youth empowerment. And uh, on the next slide, you can see the strategic terms of Ethiopia. These are training and career support, promotion and documentation, capacity building and revenue generation, which we are not doing that much. That's why you were asked to donate to this conference. Some of you donated, some of you didn't. I'm very sure you'll keep doing, you'll keep working with us, especially we want you to donate at least your time. Half an hour per week, we can do a lot. Just 30 minutes if you give us per week, that's the biggest you could donate. And we'll show you how we can change that into a lot of opportunities. And so we also encourage volunteer missions. And on the next slide, you can see our operational areas. What is Yes Ethiopia doing? So we help with employability skills and remote jobs. We support business ideas. We facilitate MSC and PhD study opportunities, short courses, and community service and networking. Especially those of you on LinkedIn, you might have seen how much we have been trying to uh, meet every week on Saturdays and networking is ongoing and we're really very ha happy about it and we'll keep doing that. On the next slide, you'll see the values of Ethiopia. So we are proactive. We believe in teamwork, shared growth, effective networking, service and people first. You see, there are a lot of people that question like, why do you do this? Why? Are you kind of like trying to represent a given group? Are you sponsored by kind of a donor? No, we are just trying to address the biggest pain of the young people. Excuse we might me. not do the job best, okay. but we're trying to address the biggest pains of our young people. Yes, Tizita, time. I apologize. Yeah, yeah, you're running out of time. So I just want to <laughs> remind you that. You yeah, know. thanks so much. Um, so let me run to the US office. Okay, great. Yeah, so before Ethiopia, we're working in Denmark. That's this is not really just the emissions that started recently. So, uh, what are the key lessons? Just 40 minutes per week, as I said, you can do a lot of uh, uh, motivation, I mean, motivating uh, activities. I'll go to the next slide about the. Oh, yeah. Yeah, let's pause here. Let's pause here. Dr. Varakat, and then I'll, I'll just uh, present from here because I was planning to go faster and uh, I didn't go that fast. Now, the Ethiopia United States office uh, is officially launched today. And there is a group of uh, board of directors, seven people, and we're uh, given full 501c uh, status here in the United States. We have seven board of directors and uh, Really, we are, we, are, we are kind of motivated. I give a special thank to Saif Wipsa because he was really like a very big motivation behind uh, why we should go faster. And uh, yeah, these are the board of directors. Later on a way forward discussion, we'll, I will come back. That's going to be by about lunchtime here in the United States, in Ethiopia, by about 8 p.m. We'll discuss again, again about what we plan to do in the future and uh, i hope this gives you a little bit of an idea about what's yes ethiopia why we were established and then where we are now and the way forward discussion will follow later uh, when we have a panel of uh, speakers uh, yes thank you so much for your time thank you today for start for stopping me because i don't know <laughs> and i thought it's just one minute after i start <laughs> I apologize. I didn't mean Thank to. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for that. I'm done. All right. Uh, distinguished guests and uh, our members, it's time for Q&A now. If you guys have anything for um, Fikadu, who is the CEO of our Yes Ethiopia, uh, please go ahead and uh, raise your questions. You can also type in the chat box. Thank you. Thank you so much. Amazing. Um, 
Fukado, it shows your passion that you feel it's one minute. <laughs> so, I thought, yeah, I thought it's like I have seven other minutes. <laughs> Thank yeah, you we've got this. 67 people on this call. But this is uh, uh, maybe more going in and out. So feel free to come in and invite uh, your friends as well. This has been uh, great so far. You know, an, an amazing work for Adu and his team are doing in Ethiopia. Thanks for thanks for showing us all the, the story behind it and all. So, if there are no questions, uh, I will go ahead and officially present the the YES. Okay, inner circle. Let me uh, bring you up. Please go ahead and. Uh... Uh, hello, good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. I, I said good evening because I am here from uh, uh, Dubai, United Arab Emirates. Uh, my name is Fasil. Uh, uh, I work here in the United Arab Emirates for the past uh, 15 years. Uh, continuous education manager. Uh, uh, I was in LinkedIn actually. I moved to uh, Google because I wasn't able to speak earlier. Um, I just would like to say uh, uh, thank you for Mr. Focato for organizing uh, this kind of uh, group. Uh, it's an amazing uh, job that you are doing uh, because I know how uh, difficult it is uh, managing your time as a student and you know doing uh, this kind of community activities. It is it's really massive. At the same time, uh, as Ethiopians, we definitely require uh, this kind of platforms to to connect and to share ideas uh, because when you start, uh, usually uh, we focus on task. But uh, when you develop business and when you go to the higher level, relationship is vital, experience sharing is vital. I just wanted to ask one question. Uh, why didn't you share with us your success stories? I know you have done a lot, a lot of jobs, like in terms mm -hmm. of uh, job opportunities, how many people have been recruited because of your network, uh, how many people were supported financially. You know, there is lots of work that you have uh, accomplished in the past. Uh, two years, so it's 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 good if you if you share uh, your success story uh, as well. We are shy. We Ethiopians actually we are shy in sharing, you know, uh, our accomplishments and uh, you know what we are uh, doing. So uh, I just want to suggest that one maybe if you have time, uh, just give us some uh, highlight uh, information about mm. that. Thank you very much for your uh, time. Thank you. Wonderful. I think, Adu, I think you've done an amazing job through through the years. <laughs> I, I am a testament to that. He, uh, he will come back and give us more of success stories uh, at a later part of this conference. All right. Yep. Okay. Great. So uh, I we have I have the privilege of introducing the newly established nonprofit organization in the US and America. Yes, US, or we call it yes, is established to fully support the activities of Yes Ethiopia. And uh, Fakadu is, as you can see here, it's his name. He, he's been instrumental, not just uh, in Ethiopia and also here. I don't know how he he does it all. He he's he's everywhere. <laughs> Nonetheless, we we have as an organization as yes, Youth Education and Support Service Organization is an officially registered United States nonprofit organization with a 501c3 uh, tax exemption privilege. We are very excited, and we are very happy that this has happened and towards the end, to end of last year, but we wanted to wait to this conference to officially reveal this and also uh, introduce the, the board of directors. So with me, some of you uh, board members are here. If, you, if you're open to it, I'll give you like 30 seconds or so to say anything you want. Uh, but we have the privilege of introducing myself. Uh, I'm the chair of the board. To Zita, the secretary, Susanna Asafa, Tasfahun, Aymero, Matthews, um, Matthew Skinting, and Richard Burton. And amazing support from 
say for Ipsa, and Fukada is also part of the executive team. So I wanted to introduce Yes today and uh, uh, officially uh, make this known that Yes USA exists to fully collaborate and support Yes Ethiopia. And, uh, board members, please free, feel free to chime in. Well, uh, thank you, Dr. Barakat. Uh, well, I think I already introduced myself earlier. Um, again, I'm Tizita and I'm the secretary of the board of directors. I'm so excited and, you know, I'm really elated um, for our uh, way forward and to work with uh, uh, Fuke. Well, he is such a dynamic one. Um, as Dr. Barakat said, you know, we, you know, it's really tough, you know, to manage everything at once, especially in this country, uh, but Fike is doing it. So great job, Fike. Um, I'm so excited again. Um, thank you. Thanks everyone for joining us again. Wonderful. Great. Any questions, comments before we go to our next Thank you. Uh, Israel, thank you. Let's keep the questions to 30 seconds as possible. All right, very quick to the point. <laughs> so we've got a lot of things to cover. Uh, any Anyone with questions okay. or comments? All right, go ahead. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, this is Katama from uh, Ethiopia. Uh, I think I uh, just uh, uh, wanted to say congratulations, congratulations, Fike. There is nothing more than education and unemployability in my country, Ethiopia. Thank you very much. Go ahead. We are with you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks so much. All right. Tizita, you want to take it to the next? Okay, you want to let me go ahead? Okay, cool. Um, sure. Well, or, our... I, or I, I, I can go ahead and uh, it's... Uh, um... Okay, that'll be perfect. If you can go ahead to the, the next two and then I'll go ahead from that. Awesome. All right. Do we have... I'm going to... I want to make you a uh, host. I if you're still here. If you're here, we are... Right now, our, our next segment is actually showing a success story, one success story of collaboration, uh, of fostering collaboration. And that is, we want to bring in someone from Helder Technology. And Fakadu, I would like you to, to be on, on point to uh, be also, you know, give some of the historical contexts. Ashinafi, uh, if, you, if you're here, I, I would like to welcome you up here and uh, tell us a little bit about Helder Technology, and then uh, Fugado and I will chime in uh, to, to, to give more of the historical background and you know what a success story that Helder Technology, the company, is. Is Ashanafi in the room? Sorry, I didn't see Ashanafi. Ashanafi, are you there? unless I can briefly tell about Helder Technologies. Uh, Helder Technologies is one of the kind of the business startups, use business startups are called Helder Technology Solutions and they are based in Addis Ababa. Uh, Ashan Nafi is a graduate from Jimma University and uh, he graduated in 2021. It's just less than three years after he finished. And we are very happy and very lucky to have them with us because in less than three years, this use showed us what's possible. Uh, Ashanafi and his team initially came to Ethiopia, I mean to Hawassa, for a business idea competition during our first annual conference. By that time, they were targeting drone technology for agriculture. And uh, they came from all the way from Jimma to Hawassa only to attend this conference in between their uh, final year project. I remember they had final exams, other busy schedule they come all the way to awasa they presented their idea 
And that's the time when I saw Ashinaf and his team, their passion and their willingness to grow. Then after they finished, they changed their business and then started a technology uh, development solutions. They are really amazing. And they are our sister organization. We are partnering with them. So we are mentoring them. They are helping us. Ashanafi and his team hired more than 10 unemployed graduates in less than three years after graduation. This is like a dream. I cannot think of me starting a business and then hiring 10 people, more than 10 people, three years after graduation. For me, this is like one of the best stories I tell to the young people, you know. You don't know what is there in tomorrow. Don't give up. I remember when Ashanafi and his team came, even they didn't have enough pocket money to pay for accommodation. They were staying all together with their families, friends, and the like. And then they were the winners during the competition in Awasa, during our first annual conference. Now they are hiring our graduates. You know, that's how you cultivate business ideas. And I'm very proud of Fender Technologies. Tomorrow they are leading the conference in Addis Ababa. And this, this conference is a kind of training for the team of Elder Technologies, so that next year they host their own conference. Now they have seen how we do, how we bring our agendas forward. And Ashan Nafi and his team, they are very impressive. I just feel very grateful, thanks to God, that we have these bright young people that shows how uh, we can benefit if we invest on the young talent. So I don't want to uh, discuss more than this. Please visit Helder Technology Solutions. They are in Addis Ababa, Magananya area. If you have any websites, graphic design, you know, uh, like different kinds of services, please give to Ashanaf and his team because they are trying to, you know, uh, minimize unemployment problems of Ethiopia. I'm very proud of you guys, uh, Abi, Ebtisam, Tamasgen, and uh, Beza. All and uh, um, Mikias, I cannot even list all your names. I just, just believe, yeah, yeah, take my note that we are very, very proud of you guys. And Ashanafi, I wish you speak. I think you are not in a room. I don't see Ashanafi. Is he no, here? No, he's not here. Or anyone, anyone from Elder Technologies, please help me <laughs> tell your story. <laughs> uh, Thomas, again, I'm our. Abi, Lijalem, Eptisam, Mikias. Abi is there. Abi, can you speak? Ashanafi, Abi Ashanafi, come on, come on up. Okay, Ashanafi. Yeah, I think he's raising, raising his hands. Okay, go ahead and uh, um, unmute yourself, Ashanafi. <coughs> okay, I'm audible, Mr. Barakat. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead, I should nothing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Fuki, for uh, recognition. I, I really appreciate our uh, opportunities provided to us from uh, Yes Utopia. I'm really so humbled, and uh, I just would like to say thank you. Uh, for uh, trusting on us and uh, giving uh, a lot of opportunities. I think it helped us uh, really to grow and uh, reach where we are today. <clears throat> so just, uh, uh, I have no words. Uh, it is really a great pleasure, especially uh, I have some emotional connection uh, while uh, being uh, co-hosting this uh, conference as a company specifically since we are also one of uh, uh, attendant uh, while it only this first year conferences uh, so uh, it, it really gives me a great pleasure and uh, i hope uh, for tomorrow's uh, startup competitions also uh, i'm sure uh, we will see when the uh, startup ideas changes into reality and uh, uh, to expand their businesses uh, yeah as a team we will continue our support for uh, tomorrow's startup competitions and also uh, for yes uh, i'm really so happy specifically and also currently 
Uh, I'm also working with uh, Mr. Israel. Uh, I just, I would like to thank her also. Uh, <clears throat> really, I, I would like to thank a lot of Estopia uh, communities. There are a lot of people who give us uh, jobs and uh, that is why we currently have around more than uh, 50 uh, staffers. Yeah, uh, all of them are due to uh, my great mentor, Mr. Fukado. Uh, I really appreciate that. And uh, uh, we, we continue doing what we are doing now. And uh, uh, currently also we opened our second branch office. Uh, yeah, I hope uh, we will expand uh, or we need around currently additional staff as too. Uh, yeah, <laughs> thank you a lot again. Uh, so uh, to, to just to share some of our workers, we have also international clients. We are working with, uh, with them. Uh, we're working with uh, Ethiopia's different organizations. And uh, yeah, I, I'm really a little emotional. So I hope you, all of you may understand me. I have no address. Uh, thank you a lot again. Thank you. What what amazing what amazing story. And a few years ago, you're I, I remember seeing a video um, you you made or someone made about your project, your drone project from Jimma University. And and then you know now looking at submitting your ideas to Yes Ethiopia competition mm -hmm. for a startup competition, and then now seeing you having employment opportunities for more than 50 people in Ethiopia. That is um, that is really, really great to see, especially youth like you, young people like you getting successful. And we are here to support you guys as well. You know, uh, it's not just starting a business, you know, the, as you go through the business, there's a lot of um, things that uh, uh, you may need help with. So community like the Yes Ethiopia and Yes and the uh, connections that we we have from outside of Ethiopia, inside of Ethiopia, successful companies helping you navigate things is something we want to continue supporting with, uh, you with. And that's, uh, um, this is an amazing story. So thank, thanks for coming, uh, Ashan Nafi. I apologize, uh, Dr. Barakat. We're running out of time. Um, just, you know, just be mindful. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> All right. We are we are about ten minutes behind to our next Absolutely. segment. Um, correct. All right. Our next segment. Uh, if any questions, comments, feel put them on the chat. Uh, uh, and again, congratulations, Ashanafi. This has been uh, um, bravo, Ashe, and uh, continue what you're doing. Uh, in our next segment, I'm going to invite. Faisal, Rometo, Jonas Hagus, and Jonas Samuel. And if you're if you're here, and our discussion is going to be about remote job experience. So um, we, we've got three experts, three people who who've had experience in this, and we want to bring them up so they can share their experience. And the youth in Ethiopia, calling in, and also youth here abroad can actually learn from their experience. So. Uh, Faisal, Jonas, Hagos, and Jonas Samuel, please uh, take a minute or so to introduce yourself. Yeah, Dr. Barakat, Faisal said you would join later. We have some overlapping commitments, so he'll be joining us during lunchtime. Just for your information. Thank okay. You. Jonas? Okay, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, um, so I'll take a minute to introduce myself. So my name is Jonas Samuel Halala. Uh, I'm based out of Canada. Uh, I'm in Edmonton, Canada right now. Um, I came to Canada about nine years ago and to do my master's in construction engineering and management. Um, and in the last year, after leaving my corporate job, I started Mado, which is a company that helps Ethiopians find remote work. And in the year that we have been active, uh, we've been able to help Ethiopians find remote work in different ways. And if my calculations are not uh, wrong, about 20,000 US dollars worth of um, impact is what we've been able to have in, in 2023. 
And in 2024, with the placements that we've had, we were going to be able to help Ethiopians in Ethiopia earn about 97,000 USD um, working from Ethiopia directly and we're placing them directly into um, foreign companies. Uh, it does mean that uh, the kind of talent that we source tend to be, uh, I guess, to some extent, uh, the top talent in Ethiopia with uh, really good communication skills, uh, a lot of client-facing roles. So I think that's a little bit about me. Um, if you have any questions, happy to answer. Oh, wonderful. That's uh, I like uh, the name of the company too, Mado. You know, if you're if you speak Amharic, you know exactly what that means. <laughs> so, uh, how do how do you how do you describe Mado for people who who don't know the meaning of the word? Like uh, for people who don't know Amharic and the call on the call here. I think um, the origin of the of the name was essentially. Uh, Mado in Ethiopia is kind of like across the way or in the ne next neighborhood. And uh, the reason we gave it that name is because the world has become a global place. And every place is essentially because of the internet model. It's not far away. Um, so I'm saying like these talents are in the next neighborhood. They're not far. Um, that's essentially the, the reason behind the name. Great. So twenty thousand dollars worth of uh, impact in Ethiopia in twenty twenty three, and more in twenty twenty four is coming. Jonas, um, um, for 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 the youth in Ethiopia, what are the main skills you mentioned about communication skills? So for youth in Ethiopia to prepare and to take advantage of these roles that open up, uh, what are the skills and the, 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 the typical skills that you are looking for? Um, I think I, I want to kind of preface, preface this by saying that the biggest challenge that we face as a country is our brand in general. So on the world stage, the brand we have is tied to poverty, is tied to conflict, is tied to a lot of negative things, which makes it very difficult when you're from Ethiopia trying to apply for, let's say, remote roles. Um, sometimes you're nobody even sees your, your CV or what you're presenting. So it's very, it becomes a very, very difficult. Um, so a part of, I think, what we need to do as a country to help the talent find work is uh, do a lot of branding work, just show the positive sides of Ethiopia, show um, that we're not just, you know, what the mainstream media says. And I believe through the power of social media, we can make an impact. That's one of the areas that Mado works in. Um, but then to answer your question directly, if you are uh, somebody in Ethiopia and you're looking for remote work, um, the number one thing I'll say is just apply, try, try it, right? Find companies that are going to be a good fit for what you're doing. Uh, check to see if they hire global talent. And you can do this if you go on their LinkedIn under the people section. You can see the makeup of companies, right? You can see if they have people from all over the world or they're just local. Um, you can check remote job boards. Um, agencies are an amazing space, like any agency. If you're in software development, marketing, um, look for agencies because a lot of agencies do hire global talent. Um, so I, have, I have a lot to say. I've, I actually have yeah. a bunch of like webinars on my LinkedIn pe page. You can go and check because we, this is something we talk about quite a bit. Wonderful. Perfect. I, uh, we also have um, um, Jonas Hagus with us. I know you, your first name is the same, so it might be a little confusing. Yeah, yeah Jonas, if you're here and you, you want to introduce yourself quickly and then uh, an experience about remote work that you have. Uh, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, good morning, good afternoon. My name is Jonas Hagos. Uh, I live here in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, my, my background is uh, hydraulic engineering. I graduated in Eth Ethiopia, Arbamid University, and then I was a lecturer over there. And then I worked with the GIZ uh, NGO companies, and then I did my master's in the Netherlands. I came to the U.S. in 2016. Uh, I, I like leadership, emotional intelligence, and project management. I am working on that. And since I know, yes, Ethiopia, I was introduced to uh, Fekadu and Ashanafi. So because of them, I 
founded a company called Immonte Leaders Corner. Uh, it's like Emotional Intelligence Leaders Corner. And then we are working with uh, Helder Technologies, uh, hiring them to work on the website and then hiring other people also uh, as a remote job uh, so that they can help us from Ethiopia. So our goal is really to help Ethiopian youth to work with us so that they can benefit from working from home. Uh, and I provided like eight weeks training, free training, emotional intelligence for Yes Ethiopian group. And then the goal is really, if anybody is approved by Yes Ethiopia, uh, our company is going to provide free uh, leadership, emotional intelligence, and pro project management training. Uh, so that's a little bit about myself, and uh, we can discuss more uh, later. I am so happy to know you all and work with you. When we work together, I think we can have a better impact. Like with Jonas Halal, I think all of us have the best on everybody and then when we combine that i think we can do better and we have seen that we have seen from mr fikadu Retta that even he was doing a lot of things when we help him when we get together uh, we can have better impact and i really believe on working together and helping our youth showing them the way and by the way it's also learning from them it's not just we we are not providing service we are also learning from I have made like gold medalists. I'm not a gold medalist, but I have made gold medalists and very good people uh, like Asha Nafi. He, he graduated uh, three years ago and he's a company holder. I just founded my company now. I'm to be 40 years old. So it's like I am also learning from them. So it's a, a two way street, really. Uh, yeah, thank you. Great. I see uh, hands raised. Let me see. Okay. Anyone with a quick question to the two Jonas's that we have here? Uh, we'll take that. Yeah, I'd like to thank Jonas, you know. Thank you, Yoni, for trusting Helder Technologies, for mentoring Ashen Nafi. Uh, I can't thank you enough also for traveling to Ethiopia and then uh, meet uh, Ethiopia members in Addis Ababa. That was a very emotional time. A lot of them gave me really like a very nice feedback and I just feel grateful and I'm very happy to have the chance to know you. And I'm very sure next year when we meet, we we'll have a lot of stories, and I'm happy to hear also about your organization in Montel. Lots of blessings, brother. Keep up. Thank you. Wonderful. Um, <clears throat> so, either of you can 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 answer this question. You know, with the um, with with more and more of the work, like more of the companies in the U and the United States, for instance, are opting for remote work. You know, most of us actually work from home. And like, what is the future? If you if you if you look forward, uh, maybe five or so years from now, and what what do you think the future is going to look like for uh, opportunities of working remotely? not just in your own country but also companies in other countries and if, if you see that opportunity to be big how can we how can youth prepare for that opportunity um can i go first jonas okay um so from the little uh, i have just about a year of experience so maybe i might not to have a lot of depth. Um, I do give some um, some level of advice for people who ask me, hey, I want to work remotely, how can I prepare? And the number one thing I say is, if you can um, try and get into an offshoring or outsourcing company, what I've noticed is people who have been in, in that space, 
uh, they learn a lot. You learn a lot about working with foreign clients. You will learn about how to communicate. You learn about cultures. Um, your tra training regimen tends to be very, very good. So in general, that's the first thing. When somebody is new, uh, there may be a recent graduate. That's one of the number one thing I tell them. If you can't get into an offshoring or outsourcing company, um, don't worry about the pay. Just focus on the experience. And if you work there for one or two years, by the time you get out, you'll be ready for remote work. Because there's a lot of challenges, like in terms of cultural differences. Um, sometimes our work ethic tends to be a bit different from what is uh, typical in North America. And those kind of things you can't learn on the job because um, your the expectation is so high. Uh, I've had people that I've placed that didn't do very well. Uh, because their expectation of what is okay work or what is acceptable is very different from what is the reality, the same North America, Canada, or the U.S. So for me, learning that um, is going to help a lot. So that would be my number one tip. Thank you. Yeah, I think as uh, Yona said, exactly. Trying to understand the culture where, especially in the U.S., and you know, you have time difference and culture difference. Uh, so the best thing is to equip yourself because it's a standard like for instance if you're coding if you are doing some it stuff i think you can learn the technical part of it but the work ethic and trying to understand the expectation of the companies is very critical and the other thing is i really think the remote job will continue because in the us even us i am an engineer i'm a project manager i'm working from home because companies understood especially if they trust you i think it's going to continue it they don't have to pay work i mean offices rent for offices uh, trans transportation so it's coming it's booming for instance i'm in nashville nashville houses are so expensive now because people from california from new york since it's so expensive living expense there they are coming to nashville because they work from Nashville while they their office is in New York or uh, LA. So it's it's really coming. What we have to do is we have to be ready and make sure we, we meet the standards of all the companies and trying to understand, meet experience sharing, you know, uh, webinars and try to equip ourselves. It's about the value. I really believe in the value, whether you're in Ethiopia or anywhere else, you have to focus on what value you can provide to the company and especially mainly the IT field that they work uh, remote, they can equip themselves. There is Udemy, they are very YouTube, you know, they are, we can share experience. That's why, yes, Ethiopia is here. Uh, we can share our experience or practical experience about, you know, anything that they need, but it has to start with the person, with the the initiative should start with that person who needs the uh, remote job. Thank you. So I, I, I echo what you said. I think there's, uh, there are opportunities that we can take. I think it's also upon uh, some of us living abroad, uh, who are abroad, to, um, to coach some of the talents in Ethiopia on the expectations and the communication styles and early communication before a bigger project starts so clarifying things so uh, there's lots of things we could do and yes could be yes ethiopia and yes the global office can be a partner in that we've had yes have, has had trainings in the past on specific uh, programming languages and data analysis and we will continue doing that as well Okay, and uh, you know, I will also mention, you know, uh, I don't have an answer to this, but let me just pose if you can answer this in, in a minute or so, e either of you. So for companies like Ashenafi's Halder Technology, are there opportunities for them as a company to, um, to collaborate with companies outside of Ethiopia so that the, 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 their employees can work on projects that are from here? Um, maybe I'll try. So um, yes, the, the thing is, for example, for me, if I meet somebody who's looking for an agency uh, that, that can work remotely, 
one of the challenges for me has always been not finding companies that meet the standard that is required in North America. So if I'm going to put my um, name on the line, my reputation on the line and recommend a company, they have to deliver. And I've had situations where even for me trying to give work to Ethiopians, um, our dead, like our stuff with deadlines is very tough. You know, we miss deadlines. We don't let people know. We don't say, hey, I'm about to miss this deadline. So there's a lot of like work ethic issues. Uh, so one of the challenges has been, okay, can we find companies that are up to standard that we can give work to? And I've been working with, a, I've been talking to a few different companies in this space where I feel like, okay, th this company can cut it, can make it. Um, that is the, the challenge. So for me, um, as long as they have the quality and they will deliver, because on North America, that's what matters. If you don't deliver, then tomorrow you get spit out. Yeah. So for me, like, are those, at that level of companies, do they exist? And I've had some moments where I felt like we need to do better, essentially. Thank you. All right, I see Temeskin Adara. If you have a quick question in 30 seconds, please. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Barakat. And th thank you all. I'm really happy to see you all. And uh, I have a, one question uh, to Jonas. So my question is that institutionally, uh, 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 I learned uh, hydraulic engineering in Armament University the same to you and what opportunities uh, are there in uh, abroad? This is my question. I think it, it's to me, right? <laughs> yeah, yes, so, yes. Yeah, uh, in terms of, emo I mean, in terms of remote jobs, uh, it might be a, li a little bit challenging, you know, in terms of engineering, because they want you to be here and they want you to meet plans. Uh, but by any chance, if you are in the US or in Europe, especially in the US, there is a lot of opportunities. Uh, it's just you have to pass a little bit of process, uh, but there are a little bit of challenge, but there is opportunity. Maybe we can talk of that of line uh, on that opportunity to save the time. Thank you. Thank you. Jonas. Thank you. Thank you. Um, really appreciate it. Jonas, both of you, Jonas Halala and Jonas Agos, um, wonderful to meet you. Thank you for your time. I think we're, we're going to move to the next segment. This is it, uh, um, you, yeah, you take the stage now. Perfect. Uh, thanks for using, you know, time wisely. Um, well, uh, we are going to move to our next speakers. Um, our next speakers are, um, Dr. Barbara and Dr. Yelso. Dr. Barbara is a professor of nutrition from Oklahoma University, who has been working diligently with Hawassa University and other universities in Ethiopia. Um, and also, uh, she has been also working as a guest professor for more than uh, 10 years in Ethiopia and supervised at least 75 M MSc and PhD students in Ethiopia. Um, including Dr. Yel Sawapeba. Those two dynamic doctors will share their experience regarding, you know, visiting uh, professorship uh, with Ethiopian universities. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and give uh, the first opportunity based on our schedule to Dr. Uh, Barbara. Um, we are uh, so excited to have you here, Dr. Barbara. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, give you the opportunity uh, just to, you know, present uh, now and you have uh, seven minutes. Thank you. We cannot hear Dr. Barbara. Um, yes. Strike no, she is not on mute. Uh -huh. There are some audio issues. Mic settings, maybe. 
Yeah, the audio is not clear. Uh, Fakadu, there is yeah. a, a phone line. Uh -huh. Let me send you a phone number that sure. she can call in instead of the computer. Yeah. Just a second. Mm -hmm. You want to hear from so I'll okay. send it by text message to her. Okay. Just Wait. a second. <clears throat> I'm sending you a text. Yeah, send it to me. Well, our distinguished guests and our members, thanks for your patience. We're having a little bit of a uh, technical problem. Uh, we're going to get back with you guys uh, very soon. You, you, you may. Doctor, doctor, I also yes. might join while doctor. Uh, sure. Doctor. Yeah, I can do that. I actually thought about it. I just, you know, want to make sure if you guys can get it pretty quick. Uh, well, uh, thank you again. Um, until we fix the problem with the mic uh, for Dr. Barbara, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and invite Dr. Wei also. Um, she is a student of Dr. Barbara Stockholm. Uh, and she's also called a mother of nutrition in Ethiopia. Uh, Dr. Yolso, thank you so much for joining us. We're so excited to hear from you. Um, you have seven minutes to go ahead and present. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, can you listen to me? Can you hear me? Yes. 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 I would have liked really to talk after Dr. Stoker, my really good friend. Congratulations, Kadu. I'm very much delighted to hear all this. I know what you are doing, and I knew you before. You know, the best is yet to come. We count on you. Thank you very much. And all Thank of you, you so the, the two Jonas's and the other ones, it's very impressive, really, and very nice to see this. Uh, actually, uh, to tell a little bit about Dr. Stoker, I went to the OSU in 1999, I think, Staying four years, it was a very good learning experience from Dr. Stoker, always. A family support, you know, I, I don't know how to express it, and everybody knows about her. So how it started this collaboration, um, I think the first year, the first semester, I found a flyer which says about, you know, OSU faculty members can go to developing countries with their, you know, uh, students. Then I wrote something and I showed it to one of my professors. It was you know, relinking historical linkage between uh, Oklahoma State University and Ethiopian University. And I said that because I knew I was in Alamea also. So when Dr. Stoker saw it, she, it, she was very happy. She corrected it and it was submitted. And luckily, we got the travel grant. Then she came to Ethiopia. I took her to all the villages and she saw the reality. And it, I think it is then when she decided, you know, she wants to do the best, you know, for the country. After I graduated, soon when I, I returned, we discussed we need to have a nutrition program in the country because um, it's a lot, you know, it all. So she collaborated with her um, friends, Rosalind Gibson from New Zealand and others and we developed the curriculum and the nutrition program was started. When it was started purposely, it was in a base a master's program because basic program would take like uh, four years. Within two years, our vision was to have the master's students graduated, then later we can start the BSc and one day a PhD. And that's come, that has come a reality. So uh, Dr. Stoker, I don't know how to say, we are really very much indebted, we love her. She's a family friend. She always keep on you, you know, she supports. So everybody says that I'm the mother of nutrition. It's because of her. And it's because of Oklahoma State University. I'm very much, you know, uh, delighted. And to see all of you, Fakadu, 
and uh, others also coming up. You are the future leaders and you are leaders already now. So I'm very happy. I don't want to take much of your time. If Dr. Stoker is back uh, online, I would like to give more you know, uh, time to save her more time because I know she has a lot to share with us. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Yul. So it's really um, awesome to hear, you know, from you. Um, thank you again. Uh, let's see if Dr. Barbara uh, can be able to manage to join us. Let's just give her a couple of minutes. Yeah, thanks so much, Dr. Yul. Uh, I feel very happy, so emotional, and uh, I'm really glad to see you. and. Uh, also, you and Dr. Uh, Stoker are speaking on the side of each other, you know. Uh, when we see Dr. Stoker in campus, I remember I was just finishing my undergraduate and very kind of not confident even to say hi to her, like a foreigner in campus. I uh, starting from that time until now, more than 20 years, you know, in touch. I've been to Oklahoma State twice. She invited me. Like we became families now, it's more than just professional uh, <laughs> partnership. And this is because of you, Dr. Uh, Yaul. And uh, God bless you for all what you did. And you have a lot of children. We're really proud of you. And uh, you. people who work in the Ethiopian Public Health Institution, at Disawa University, Hawasa University, all over the country, the nutrition community knows you for sure. Mothers of nutrition, Dr. Yaul, so uh dr barbara stoker professor rosaline gibson and those from canada dr carol dr suzanne and also uh those from germany you know all these international experiences are because of the seed you planted that those days so i just want to mention this and i cannot say thank you enough and also the nutrition program in ethiopia we know how it was started in our university the first stage master's program also now the PhD program. So we're really, really lucky to have you with us. So lots of blessings. Is Dr. Stoker online? I want to add one her. thing. If she's, if she's yeah, not yet online. Go ahead. Uh, we had this zinc project, different uh, you know, research projects. So we usually, whenever Dr. Stoker comes next day, we are in the field. So we had like, um, our subjects were 20 pregnant mothers when we were doing the zinc study and our incentives were uh, blankets. So this one lady, after she delivered, we went with Dr. Stoker when she returned back to Ethiopia and she was talking in Sidaminya and I don't uh, listen, hear Sidaminya with the translator. I know something she was, that lady was saying something about us. Then I asked my tra the translator, what is she saying? She said, in her language, whenever these ladies come, you know, whenever Dr. Stoker comes to the village, she feels as if her auntie has come, you know? So it's all, how do you feel when you hear that, you know, from, from a person outside of the country? It was really, I know, touching, and uh, Dr. Stoker is really amazing lady, very hard working with big endurance. Yeah. Um, I think she sent a text message. Sure, yeah, I think the sound is not working for her. Uh, we're gonna send her a number that she can call us at. Mm -hmm. Give us a second, please. I sent a message, like, yeah, she couldn't join that WhatsApp number. I think that's it. Mm. So we can, maybe we can, was funny to later like if the okay. stalker can stay uh let's continue and then we become again sure okay. um yeah we can we can do that um we can just give her a chance later um, yeah 
Um, I'll go ahead and uh, open the Q&A if anybody has any questions for our distinguished uh, doctor, Dr. Yil. So um, if anybody has anything, please forward your uh, questions. Uh, and thank you. I apologize, I'm muting you, I know this. All right, um, it looks like nobody has any questions. Uh, if nobody has any questions, uh, we can go ahead and uh, move forward and go to our uh, next speaker. Uh, I apologize, I think somebody wrote his question here for Dr. Il, so I can still go back. Uh, well, um, it's from Ephraim. Uh, he is asking uh, about how do you, you know, reimagine the workforce in Ethiopia? Dr. Il, so. Um, if you are talking about the nutrition workforce, is that is that the question, Ephraim? Let me let That's me correct. assume this is for the yes. nutrition uh, workforce. Of course, it has a challenge, you know, to get um, work. But you know, looking at Fukado and looking at all of you, you know, I I I am optimist. You know, things will be better. Now, from what we hear, they are creating their own jobs, they are employing, they are making international contacts. So I feel, you know, at, at the moment, things may be challenging, but we should continue. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Ulso. Uh, all right, so if that is all, we're going to go ahead and uh, invite our next speaker, uh, who is uh, Brianna Wolf. Again, thank you, everyone, uh, you know, for your active engagement. We really, really appreciate that. Um, Brianna Wolf is a global engagement coordinator at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, uh, and she is going to share with us about her experience and actually ways to collaborate with uh, YES. Uh, Brianna, it is a pleasure to have you here uh, and you have seven minutes to present. Appreciate it. So for Carter's in a phone number for right. what's that? What was that? Um, I apologize. I think Dr. Barbara is- can hear Dr. Uh, Barbara. I think it's yeah. working now. I can invite her if um, Brianna is here. I can invite her after Brianna, if possible. Is Brianna in the room? I don't see Brianna. Is Brianna in the room? Okay, perfect. Uh, I haven't heard from her, so we can go ahead with Dr. I mean, Professor Barbara. Professor Barbara, we can um, hear you. welcome again. Thank you. No sound. Oh. We can hear you. We can, we hear, can you. hear you. Yeah. You can you can hear me? Yes. 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 Really? Okay. Yep. Absolutely. Working. Thank you. Uh, I had an Ethiopian helping me. So <laughs> things are working well on this side now, maybe. Um, I'm very happy to join your conference today. Let me be very brief because um, I spent so much time here uh, wasted. I want to offer my congratulations to all of you for the wonderful work you're doing. Um, and please set a very firm timer because you know university president, uh, pre university professors are accustomed to talking for 50 minutes. So be firm. Um, more than 20 years ago, uh, I came, as Dr. Yu Wilson told you, to um, understand her research on developing complementary uh, foods for infants. 
so she took me around to Wasa, was a wonderful host, and I have wanted to come back again and again. And now people call Hawassa and Ethiopia my second home. Um, Kakadu asked me to speak very briefly about the historic ties at OSU uh, with Ethiopia. I um, want to mention that in the 1950s, uh, there was a strong link through the Point Four program with the building of Alamaya, now Haramaya University. So more than 200 faculty members uh, over the next 15 years worked and lived in Ethiopia. So Ethiopian is really dear to people's hearts still. And many students have come to Ethiopia. Uh, to, to visit, but many Ethiopians have come to OSU to study. Right now at OSU, there are more than 100 countries represented on campus. But I need to, to let you know that the Ethiopian flag is one of the ones that's always flying at our international center. And there's a very special uh, relationship uh, with Ethiopia. So one reason I'm telling you about this history is to remind young people that with determination and imagination and collaboration, there's so much that can be accomplished. And for Ethiopians outside of the country and who are thinking about giving back to Ethiopia, as many of you are, I want to share that working with Ethiopian students has been the highlight of my professional career. I think that's why people say that Ethiopia is my second home, because I keep coming back. And it's the welcome that I've received from Ethiopian colleagues and students that has made that so. Dr. Wilso was very persuasive. She said, you must help us start a nutrition curriculum. So that, that was a, an important reason for coming at first. And it, it continues to be important to me. I do think that this organization is uh, doing wonderful work. And I think um, the nutrition programs are going well. Some outstanding students from the programs have contributed to important changes in Ethiopia, um, like pushing for salt iodization. There was a time when iodized salt was down to 4% of households consuming iodized salt. And women that we saw in the village wore these lovely scarves wrapped around their shoulder and neck. And only later did I realize that they were covering a goiter. So there was so much to be done. And Dr. Uwilso took on many of those projects. And now there are uh, studies going on on early child development and how important that sort of thing is. So there's a lot of work left to do. There are many, many opportunities. And I think that um, continuing to um, work together and collaborate is going to be the way to get these things done. Uh, Fakadu, I meant, uh, as he said, very soon after he graduated, and Dr. Uwilso said he would be an outstanding person to work with our project. And indeed, he was, and he's uh, continued to do outstanding work. Um, 
I think I should uh, stop, given that um, much of my time was was taken by technology. Uh, but what what questions might I answer? Thank you, uh, Professor Barbara. We really appreciate your time and engagement and actually your enormous contribution to our people. Um, your and uh, Dr. Yeltsin's, of course, uh, contribution. It's really heartwarming to hear that. Thank you so much. I'm so elated to hear that. Um, well, I'm going to open, uh, open it for Q&A now. Uh, if anybody has any questions, uh, please raise your questions. Um, Dr. Barbara is ready to uh, respond your um, questions or any concerns. Thank you. While people are thinking about this, um, Fakadu asked me for some tips for students who are studying um, abroad. And one of the things that, one of the difficulties that we have is that when you get your passport and you send your passport, a copy of your passport to a university in Europe or US, their records are going to show you by your first name and your grandfather's name. So when a request comes for a recommendation letter to say to me, and I'm looking at this first name, and I think, well, this last name, I don't know that one. And so they never show your the name that you use in Ethiopia. Does that make sense? So they, yes. they call you internationally. People call, well, our, well, your records will show you as your first and your third name. So it, it becomes difficult to identify if you um, are applying someplace. All right, I will hush and see if there are any questions. Yeah, that's an interesting observation. Um, yeah, for, for the Ayatsumino. So I, I, I'm just kind of clarifying a little bit more about the the last name because uh, you know what we call what we we address ourselves in Ethiopia as your first name and then what you would consider a middle name here and that, that's a very good tip to uh, perhaps include in the letter. <laughs> <laughs> one one professor at Hawassa University told me that he was sitting in the airport, the air, and he kept hearing this announcement calling for Fakadu and some last name that he didn't recognize. Yes, that last name was a mispronunciation of his grandfather's name, and he suddenly realized and ran to the gate where he was supposed to go. Yeah. Amazing. So, one question uh, for you, Doctor uh, Doctor Stalker: um, How can we build more of these strong ties, not just with the, between universities, but like at a personal level? I feel like you and uh, you had some pers strong personal relationships with Doctor Yolso that helped build even a stronger relationship with institutions. So it sort of started with two people coming together and then went ahead to even establish a university and long-term relationship like the one we see. Um, how can we do more of that? <laughs> Any tips? <laughs> you, well, Dr. Uwilso is special. There's a reason she's called the mother of nutrition. But um, I think long-term collaboration and is is key and I think communication is better all the time not this morning for me but generally better all the time uh, when we first started working together 
um, internet was pretty shaky and not so many people had cell phones. I know that's hard to imagine, but um, Ethiopia has moved so fast and I think taking advantage of technology uh, is going to be key to keeping some of these things going. Um, some of the projects that we want to do are ex expensive and some of them will take grants and it needs what what we try to do needs to be what Ethiopia what the people in Ethiopia want and need I think that's something that made uh, our our collaboration Dr. Wilso and mine special was that she was already well established at the university she had the contacts and she knew what was needed so it, it wasn't me deciding, it was she decided and, and, and asked and told us how we could help. And I think that's really important for long-term collaborations. Perfect. Um, well, thank you so much, Dr. Barbara again. Uh, looks like we do have a couple of questions for you um, in the chat box. Well, uh, one of them is, uh, it's about how can like young Ethiopians connect to collaborate on research with you? And what steps can we take to seize this opportunity? This is from Hewat. Thanks for asking Hewat. Um, so I actually am retired now. And so I can, um, you know, try to help people connect with other people who make this long trip often or who can collaborate by technology. Um, I'm not um, beginning projects with new students now because of my age. Um, however, good nutrition keeps you well. So uh, that, that's all right. But, um, there's also, I see, a question about health sciences and a lot of funding right now um, with some of the international organizations focuses on sustainability and thus on agriculture and the links with climate change, many of the things that we talk about in terms of the uh, development goals. Um, so I think that's why we hear a lot about uh, agriculture. I think just keeping in touch with organizations. And if you get a call, sometimes, sometimes people in the country hear about uh, grant opportunities ahead of people outside. So if you can uh, keep your any colleague that you want to collaborate with um, informed of possible grant opportunities that you that the two of you could write together. That will help keeping keeping things going. Um, so I think just more communication is probably the key to keeping collaborations going. Perfect. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Barbara, again. The communication is key, absolutely. It's really imperative for all of us. Uh, we do have another hand from uh, Debella. You can go ahead, Debella. Okay, <clears throat> thank you. Are you hearing me? Yes, we can hear you. Thank, thank you, thank you. Thank you, I wanted to thank um, the program coordinators. Um, program committees of uh, Ethiopia committees and all uh, the members and also I want to thank uh, next I want to thank professor Barbaras uh, in, in in the nice help in which they have done in Ethiopia and <clears throat> uh, to save the time I want to go to the questions 
Uh, I want to ask uh, Professor Barbaras, uh, what is your uh, <clears throat> future plan to continue uh, to do with uh, Yes Utopia uh, in helping the PhD looking students, especially in uh, in sharing of uh, life and the professional experience? This is only one question I want to ask. Thank you. Um. Can can you repeat the last part of what you said? They started, they're doing construction on the floor above me, and it got very loud. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Specifically in uh, sharing of uh, your life and the professional uh, experiences. Uh -huh. Okay, what, uh -huh. you, what, what is your plan in uh, supporting the youth in uh, Yes Topia? Thank you. I think finding for for young people starting out finding mentors is really important i think it um they a mentor can guide you uh and i think there are so many ethiopians outside of the country who would like to give back in in helpful ways and i think that's back again to um, communication, but I, that's why I'm so excited about this organization that's been built, is that I think that, that it will be helpful in linking uh, people with, young people with mentors who can help them uh, with their professional development. Um, you know, if if you're writing something, some letter, always get some friend to proofread it. Um, find out, you know, because um, if you have lots of mistakes in in some letter that you write, um, then people underestimate how how wonderful a collaborator you would be. So it's always uh, difficult as you uh, cut and paste things within a letter. It's, it's sometimes easy to think you didn't say that twice, and you really did. So get someone else to proofread what, what you're sending out until you know somebody well. A tiny thing, but it might help. Absolutely. Thank you so much for your advice and recommendation, Dr. Barbara. Um, sorry, I was, I've been going with doctor and professor. I think it all goes together, um, go together. So um, thank you so much again. Uh, well, mm -hmm. does anybody have any questions for um, Dr. Barbara? before we jump into the next one. Uh, I see Kas Kasim Felleka. Uh, you can go ahead, Kasim. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Is that hearing me? Yes, yeah. we can hear yeah. you, Kasim. Yeah, my name is Kasim from Ethiopia, especially from the remote rural area. Um, uh, have no access of uh, just communication and barriers. So what I am going to, before I'm asking, I am um, thank for Dr. Barbara and those facilitators. My question is that uh, is Barbara, Dr. Barbara said that communication is the best for all. But from your life testimony, what do you advise? How do we uh, uh, develop positive communication and bring to a difference for especially living with us like rural communities who have no access. How do you address our communication? Because we are mostly out of the box of the technology. So for you, from your life testimony then, how do you communicate and how do you say something and join with friends? Is there 
any mechanism or possibilities. Thank you very much. You know, one thing that has amazed me in Ethiopia is how fast your technology has advanced compared to the time that it took us in developing con in developed countries to advance. It seemed to me that you just jumped over the landline era in many cases. So um, at the suddenly people had cell phones. So I I, I think that's one thing. Uh, also, um, I think. Uh, local mentors first, and then they can help you connect with someone outside if that's what you're needing to do. And I, I think that Ethiopia is developing so fast that this communication problem in, in rural areas will improve. We actually still have in the US some areas where there are dead spots for internet and they're working on those. But I think that, um, you know, those things are going to improve in Ethiopia rapidly. So don't give up, be in this for the long term. Mm -hmm. Find uh, a local mentor first that can help you connect. Thank you very much, Dr. Barbara. Appreciate. We will do that. You're welcome. Well, um, thank you so much again, um, Professor Barbara. Um, that's just just a wonderful explanation. Um, you know, don't give up. Um, be committed, and you know, just be dedicated, and have plans. Absolutely, that helps a lot every one of us. Um, yeah, so uh, if anybody has any questions for her, I would like to give the opportunity before uh, I go ahead and invite our next speaker. Uh, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and um, give the opportunity to speak or to ask a question uh, to Ruth. Ruth, you can go ahead, um, just try to make it a little bit Quicker, <laughs> appreciate it. Can you hear us, Ruth? Yeah. Yes, yes, I do. Okay, yeah, Thank you can go ahead. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, all of you, the facilitator and Dr. Barbara. Uh, professionally, I'm a psychiatry professional and psychologist, but according to the the, the this uh, inclusion uh, of yes i am available to be here i would like to ask dr barbara about the, the team working because we should have to work together with an, a different kind of participation so how to to build the best team communication and how to have the, to be have uh, best team leading uh, uh, experience. Uh, I hope you do have so many experience on this. Uh, so, would you mind if you share this experience with us? Thank you so much, sister. Um, psychologists are rare um, in in Ethiopia. I think it's it's uh, not not so many of you around. Um, I would be happy to communicate with you. I I. Um, don't want to take up a whole lot of time right now um but if i um, i can maybe maybe you can get my inner my email from uh dr Fakadu. I, I i'm already giving him his phd that's how good i think he is never mind you can get your get it from Fakadu or um i yeah I also wrote down your name. We'll find out how to get a hold of you. There was one other question here really quick. I will try to answer and that was can can you send us a can you send a nutrition related grant proposal for your review and feedback before submission? Um, 
th this is hard to say. I one of the things with retirement, I'm spending more time with my family, and the other thing is it does take some time. So it all depends. You know, if it's an area that I know well, I it, I would want to help, but um, this is an answer to a question from he want, but it's not not. Uh, don't have me be the only reviewer. I I will try, but it's not. I can't review them so fast anymore. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Professor, uh, for your time and you know engagement and everything. Your advice are really relevant and uh, helpful to every one of us. Uh, all right, so we're gonna go ahead and um, invite our next speaker, uh, who is uh, Brianna. Um, Brianna, um, I just saw her. I think she should be here. Um, I already uh, introduced her, but I can go ahead and uh, do it again. Uh, Brianna is a global engagement coordinator at the University of uh, Nebraska Lincoln. And then she's going to share with us her experience in actually uh, ways to collaborate with us with uh, YES. Uh, Brianna, it is a pleasure to have you here. Um, you have seven minutes um, and you can go ahead and present. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me uh, for the invitation. I am I'm honored to be speaking among so many excellent professionals and educators. Uh, in Ethiopia and around the world, wherever you may be. Um, thank you again. Uh, my name is Brianne. I work for the University of Nebraska Lincoln. I don't have nearly the uh, impressive CV uh, or, or qualifications as someone like Dr. Stoker. Um, I'm not a food scientist or an agronomist or an engineer, um, but I am a connector. And that to me is something that is the most powerful thing I can do uh, for my institution and for others. So um, I, I want you to kind of remember that it, these big challenges we face take all kinds. They take all kinds of people with every kind of talent and skill set. So it doesn't matter what you have as your talents um, or what you have as your experience or your education, you have something to contribute to our big challenges we face as a world. So I just want to open with that. Um, I, I also want to just share again something that I feel is important for you to remember about yourself. Um, everyone that you meet has something to teach you. Um, and you all have something to teach me um, and each other and everyone you meet can learn from each of you. Uh, so I, I encourage you to not underestimate what you can give to others and what you can share um, with others in the world uh, about what your, your knowledge is and your expertise. Um, the US, for example, is and many other countries have a lot to learn. Um, we have a lot to learn from people outside of the US as well as people from within our country. Um, and so I, uh, that's a big piece as to why I uh, run a program focused on the sustainable development goals. Um, I imagine you all are familiar with the SDGs. They're very common outside of the US. Not everyone in the US knows what they are. But um, I know many of you probably do. This uh, kind of circle around me uh, showcases some of the icons associated with the different goals, whether that's zero hunger, no poverty, um, quality education, good health and well being, climate action, all of those. So um, the work that I do at UNL uh, is I do a lot of things for our students. I work specifically in our College of Agricultural Sciences and Natural Resources. And so we work in, of course, place things like agronomy and food science and biological systems engineering, but also entomology and animal science and entrepreneurship and many things kind of related to that. So my work is very varied and the students I work with have a lot of different interests and majors. And I try to connect them with people around the world um, who can teach them things, who can be connections for them, for their career, um, and, and just inspiration of how they could go forward um, in, their, in their careers and their professional lives to, in order to make a difference. Because as, you, as many of you feel probably, many of my students, 
They just want to do something that's meaningful, um, that is doing something good for the world. Um, and so the program that I run is focused on the SDGs, like I mentioned, and it is uh, a way for them to understand how to take their career or not career, but their major, for example, their course of study and apply it to towards some of these big challenges. It's not going to work for every one of the big challenges of the world, but it will have it will probably contribute something towards one or two or three of them. And so I try to help those students know um, know that. Uh, I'm not sure if my slides came through uh, when I sent them earlier in the morning. It's okay if they didn't. I can just chat um, without having the, the slides, but um, the program kind of has a few different components. Um, and I'll just kind of share with you briefly about what the program is because it's one way for me to um, connect my students with people around the world as well as people in the US and it allows us to learn from others and to learn from the amazing innovation happening all over the world. Um, and oftentimes with not very much resources. Uh, and that's to me much more impressive than someone who has all the resources in the world and is doing something interesting. But when you can do things that are really um, moving the needle and really making progress towards big problems without much resources, but a lot of innovation, I think that's the most impressive. Um, and that's inspirational for our students, for sure. Um, and, and it also helps them understand what is what is out there and what is possible, um, whether they are an American student who um, is going to maybe go back, like Dr. Stoker said, to their hometown in a rural area where maybe the connectivity is also not so good, or maybe it's a student who's going back to a place in a big city, maybe they have a lot of resources, maybe they don't, or maybe it's one of our students from another part of the world. We have an amazing array of students from many places uh, around the world, and they may be returning to their home countries uh, after they graduate to make impact and make progress towards big challenges their communities face. Um, and so we wanna have them hear from everyone. Uh, if I could have the, the next slide go, uh, and the next one. Thank you. So um, one thing I want to share with you all, maybe you know about it, maybe you don't, uh, that is part of our program that is something that's free and it's open to any of you who would like to advance some of your knowledge about the SDGs. These are probably things that you may already know, but it could, um, all learning to me, I think is useful. And so one part of our program we utilize is the SDG Academy. Um, and this is a free uh, array of resources that any of you are able to take advantage of if you have an internet connection, which I know is not always the case. So um, I do forgive me if that is a barrier. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, do forgive me if that's a barrier uh, to, to you to access this. But oftentimes, if you do have maybe brief internet connection, you could uh, do what you can do and uh, maybe download some resources and download some videos or whatever on your phone um, and be able to access them uh, when you don't have connectivity. But our students take advantage of these courses and they kind of familiarize themselves. They dig into uh, some of these goals. So if they choose zero hunger, for example, they may choose the, the feeding a hungry planet course or whatever and they dig in and they learn. They also learn from experts around the world. So this is a, a chance for you to be able to take advantage of the expertise and, and, um, and impressive work of, of experts and faculty and scientists from around the world. You can also use this as a connection, a way that you could be um, connecting with other learners. Um, I have actually, I did an online course through uh, what used to be called the Philanthropy University, and it was on global social entrepreneurship. And we were a part of a team together, and that team we a lot of us still stay in touch like maybe 10 years later um so don't uh, underestimate the potential of networking and building new contacts through some of these open access courses and um and things you can do online for free um can you go to the next slide please um the the next piece of our uh program that i am the most proud of is our experts so the students do some of the course then they have two expert sessions they uh engage with a local expert and when i say local i mean from nebraska so they could be someone doing work in nebraska or around in, in one of the neighboring states about zero hunger this helps our students understand that things like hunger are not just problems that happen far away in different parts of the world they are happening right in our doorstep too in our in our neighborhood um, but also they are very challenging problems with different scales and different intensities in different parts of the world. Um, and those are both important things for them to understand. Um, but like I said, it's amazing to hear from these experts talking about how their work advances these big goals 
um, in very different ways with different capacities and talents and different technologies and different innovations. Um, so it's just, it's amazing. We are so lucky. We have everyone from someone here on the far left doing agrivoltaics, which is uh, utilizing um, solar panels and agriculture co-located, having their agriculture, whether it's livestock or crops, growing and um, eating underneath alongside the, the um, solar panels, for example. We have someone like um, Biplap Keten Paul here next to him, who is uh, an incredible innovator in the water space in India, helping to mitigate extreme water and uh, climate impacts. Um, there are just people from around the world who are doing these amazing things. Um, one of my favorites who's going to be chatting with our uh, our group here next month is Balkisa. She is speaking to us out of Niger and talks about climate action and how um, her the climate friendly and climate adapted trees and shrubs and plants that are traditional to Niger can be incredibly useful both towards um, mitigating climate act, uh, climate impacts and improving food security and culturally relevant um, food sources. Um, we have just an incredible array of people who get to speak with our students. Um, up here on the far right, we have Bruno, who is both a paramedic, a firefighter, a nurse, and a healthcare entrepreneur. And so being able to share that those are possibilities for people that you don't have to be just one thing. You could be many things at the same time is very inspiring for our students. Can you go to the next slide, please? Hey, Brianna, those slides yes. are really awesome. Thank you so much. I just wanted to remind you about, you know, time. Hi. Okay, understood. It. understood. <laughs> Thank understood. you. Okay, I don't have to share any more of the slides, but um, those are actually maybe can you just go forward a couple more and then i won't speak anymore you can just check them out and read them yourself there there we go so this is just an overview of the benefits of our program it's not anything exciting but it's something that i created out of existing kind of resources in our university so um it's i i, I encourage you to look for what already exists and look for what connections you have or might have through things like linkedin twitter um, researchgate lots of other online platforms and ways that you can creatively combine things that exist to make something better and to connect people um, more closely. So I'll, I'll leave it at that. Thank you for the for the note about time. Awesome. Thank you so much again. Um, I just want to make sure, are you done or do you need? No, nope, it's fine. You, you good? OK, awesome. Thank you so much, uh, Brianna, for such a wonderful presentation. I hope we learned it a lot. Um, and it's really uh, crucial to know, you know, such resources. You, we can access it anywhere, as she said. So let's go ahead and, you know, just take advantage of that. Um, so thank you so much, Brianna, again. Uh, it was really a wonderful presentation. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give the opportunity for uh, you know, the attendees to make sure if they have, uh, you know, any questions just to make sure to address that. Uh, okay, I see Kasim. You can go ahead, Kasim. We have a few minutes for questions. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Brana, for your wonderful uh, presentation. And you inspire me just uh, uh, to wake up and uh, give me aside how can i update myself how can i uh, make a link like that uh, professionally i am uh, food security and livelihood i am working on refugee uh, uh, areas like in gambilla if you know apart from 770 kilometers from addis ababa uh, uh, now currently uh, you know the education is uh, is impossible is to join universities uh with fee but we can update ourselves with um, browsing or internet online courses something like that so how how do we uh, get access and connect free online courses to update ourselves just to give uh, and, uh, and serve our community with their mind how do we connect such uh, free online courses and join these courses and to update our service even helps us to wake up from like remote working in remote areas sure. is that clear? Um, 
I, I think so. Um, so how can we connect some of the material of the online courses to the challenges in your areas? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, how just, you know, when you hire education, you, you just create by your own without uh, having a skill knowledge. You can't do anything. You can't serve your people. So just to serve people, we need we have we, we wanted to update ourselves like you present here different courses online courses so how do we access such courses the free online courses to join or to link is that sure. clear i think so yeah um as i mentioned the sdg academy is a great uh, array of courses that are specifically tied to each sdg they're all free there is no obligation for cost on any of them um, and they are, many of them are asynchronous. So if you can't finish them all when you have good connectivity, you can put them on pause and do them later um, or download certain resources like documents or videos. Um, there are also many free courses throughout the world that are uh, throughout the internet that are, Coursera is a very good one. MOOC.org I haven't been on, but I'm sure that's also good. The UN and other sorts of organizations oftentimes create these courses. I wanted to mention too, there are oftentimes courses or certificates or maybe learning conferences that exist that may have a cost associated contact the person who's uh who's put out it out there if you see it on linkedin or on twitter or threads contact them ask them if they have any scholarship availability or if you could volunteer to serve the conference organizers and coordinators in exchange for attending because those can be very valuable learning experiences and networking experience i myself have taken advantage of um like volunteering at a conference and i was able to get my registration paid for by just being someone who helped and did things for the conference organizers um similarly i have applied for scholarships uh, so i could attend a an online kind of conference and and learning experience and i was able to get it so those are there are many opportunities that maybe do not cost anything there are the free courses that are many and then there are also many things that have scholarship and financial aid if you ask but sometimes if you don't ask you won't find out so um i, I appreciate your efforts and um i give you a lot of encouragements to keep going thank you very much heartfelt appreciation thank you so much uh, thanks for the questions uh Kasim, and thanks for answering diligently uh brianna thank you so much uh we do have a couple more uh you know people who wanted to ask but we really run out of time. Um, if I can give you guys just a minute, just one one minute, <laughs> you can go ahead and you know ask your questions. I'm gonna give this to um, the opportunity to Zara Brook first, and then I'll go ahead and read the uh, question in the chat box. Um, thank you so much for being mindful about our time. I appreciate it. We do have other guests. <laughs> thank you. Go ahead, Zara Brook. Can you hear us, uh, Zara Brook? Uh, Zara Brook, when, or I'm sorry, uh, Amar. Thank you, Tazata. I, I can hear you. Yes. yes I don't correct. have a question. I, I was listening to the questions and answers from uh, all participants. I would like to thank for Professor Barbara and uh, Brianna and uh, for the organizers and uh, for you, the MEC. Thank you so much for uh, giving me this chat. Let us keep in touch. Of course, of course. That's Thank you so much. Practice, to share this kind of experience. I appreciate it. Thanks for the kind words, Sarah Brooke. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and read the question from the chat box. Uh, we just don't want to, you know, um, miss it so uh this is from Ephraim. thanks for asking Ephraim. Uh, the question is how do you uh, measure or track your impacts while uh working across the world uh, that's his question <laughs> great question and very difficult always to do um my work is very student focused it's not as much on the worldwide research and on ground work however i work closely with our faculty what i try to do 
it's hard to track impact always across the world. What I do try to keep track of is what connections we have, um, is to look at, okay, we have this person who does this collaboration in this country, and we have this person who has cultural ties and, and country ties to this place. Um, maybe they have language capability here, um, or maybe they did a, a fellowship here once in their career. And I keep, um, I keep a record of all of that sort of network information, um, whether it's formal, like formal research and formal um, engagement, or informal, like they just have, that's where they're from, or that's maybe where their family is from. Both of these things are very important, in my opinion, because we know, in as our university, we have to, um, if we're going to be effective in any international work, we must uh, utilize the experience and expertise of people who are from those places, um, and only work with them and take their lead with what makes sense for their home. Um, and so, knowing who has worked with different places, who has connections and who has cultural knowledge and language knowledge is incredibly important. So the way I track is mostly just who we know and who is working where throughout the world. Um, it's another challenge to see what that impact is. I'm going to leave that to the faculty members to uh, track their global impact in their global collaborations. But for now, I just track where we know people and where we have connections and expertise throughout the world and that definitely helps us um, as we approach new opportunities and new challenges all right oh that was wonderful thank you so much again um i know we do have more hands <laughs> uh but i apologize um if, we can if answer it's possible, if people would like to send maybe uh questions to any of the organizers i'm happy to answer any questions after today is finished so the other speakers can go forward perfect perfect that's awesome yes we can do that please uh go ahead i'm sorry that i'm Salu. please go ahead and put it uh in the chat box so that we can you know uh, answer a question later. Um, thank you so much again, Brianna, and thank you so much, um, everyone, for your active engagement. Um, thank you again. Uh, I'm sure uh, Professor Mark doesn't mind if we can, I mean, if we just steal a couple of minutes for a break. Uh, I wanted us just to take a break for a couple of minutes um, and then come back uh, for our next speakers. Um, Dr. Burkett, if you don't mind, just to go ahead and, you know, just put the classical for us. That would be awesome. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Brianna, again. It's an honor to speak with you all, and I uh, encourage you and appreciate your work. You're doing amazing. I appreciate it.
Uh, I think we're gonna uh, go ahead and you know go ahead and uh, get started again. Uh, thanks everyone again. Uh, welcome back. We're gonna go ahead and you know invite uh, our next speaker. Um, I'm gonna mute you, Hewitt. Thank you for muting. I appreciate it. Uh, our next speaker is uh, Professor Mark um, Balshut. Um, well, Professor Mark is the head of the Department of uh, Agricultural Leadership, Education and Communication at the University of uh, Nebraska-Lincoln. He will present about the leadership program and experience of the department in actually engaging international students in tips um, of success. Uh, well, this distinguished professor has been enormously supporting our international students. Um, so he is gonna uh, present for us. Uh, Professor Mark, it is a pleasure to have you here. Uh, you have seven minutes to present. Thank you. I think he's having like issues to join the meeting. I don't know, uh, can you see his name in the list? He just said he couldn't join. Dr. Oh. Barakat, he said he's not invited. Uh, I have sent him a link and he couldn't join. Gotcha. May I go ahead and invite our next speaker so that we can save time? Got it. Can you send me his uh, email? Yeah, I'll send you his email. Yes. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Who is doc after Dr. Mark? Is it Dr. Nagga? Yes, it's going to be Dr. Nagga. Um, I can go ahead and invite him if he's here. Yeah, Dr. Uh, Nagga said he is in East time zone and he didn't understand like that we're using Central time. Uh -huh. So he'll be joining later. So while Dr. Mark is trying to join, if there is any question people would like to ask, we'd be very happy to answer. Uh, just give time for the audience. Let me try to send this address to Dr. Barakat to invite him. Sure, thank you. Uh, that's gonna give us, uh, you know, a few minutes um, to, you know, ask anything that, you know, you guys wanted to ask um, about uh, the collaboration that we're trying to create with, you know, different organizations. Um, and what do you guys would like to see in the future? How do you guys want to contribute to this organization? If anybody would like to speak about it, I would be more than happy. Thank you. There is a question in the chat box about a PhD project for students in Ethiopia from Amare. Amare, can you explain a little bit? Is it for Dr. Stoker, press speakers, or for? I think it's just posting. Does they have you seen the question? Yes, I just see it. Um, Amara, can you go ahead and explain that if you're able to speak? Is that for? Uh, uh, Brianna or uh, Dr. Barbara or Dr. Yolso. Uh, 
I'm not sure if you can hear us. I think if I understood, okay. I might say a little bit about our plans from Yes Ethiopia, uh, like what we're planning to do, uh, do in relation to PhD students in Ethiopia. One of the aims of this conference, if you have seen when I was introducing Yes Ethiopia, especially the office in the United States, our aim is to connect the Ethiopian scholars and also grant opportunities and uh, all the possibilities of accessing, let's say, academic advisors, support for your research, a way to publish your study, and also uh, like this kind of international conferences. So uh, yes, in yes, Ethiopia, for sure, we understand your, your situation. And also we are actively working on that, for sure. So please note that uh, it's a bit of process. It's a process, you know, the yes, Ethiopia office in the United States is just launching. It's only three months or four months after we start. But we have this in mind. Uh, for example, Dr. Barakat is already uh, assisting two PhD students in Kotabe University. And also uh, Dr. Barbara Stoker, who just spoke. She has been working in Awasa for the last 20 years. That's why we invited her as a guest speaker, so that she shows what can be done as a guest person, as a visiting professor. and. Uh, I'm very sure from Yes Ethiopia, uh, we have the issues of PhD students admitted within country as one of our high agendas for the coming missions. Uh, but what's very important for PhD students, for example, uh, from my experience, uh, what I see a lot of us, we are not using the technology, especially the power of LinkedIn. I know a lot of PhD students uh, who are on Facebook, they are not on LinkedIn. My friend, look. Like, where is the professional networking platform? Number one is LinkedIn. But if the, the most uh, common platform you are using is Facebook, you are already avoiding the way to get access to academic advisors, a potential mentor, call for grants, you know, partnerships. So the genuine partnerships, as far as I see, I'm not discriminating the social media, but trust me, LinkedIn is the best place. So. Please use that and also show your determination. Like, well, I want to have a grant. I want to finish my PhD, but where is the starting point? What did you write about your PhD topic on social media? Who are you following? Which organization are you connected to? Even for Yes Ethiopia, trust me, I don't see a lot of PhD students in our volunteers. Like this year, we are, now we are hosting a conference in Addis Ababa tomorrow. We don't, I don't have a PhD volunteer in that group. No one is a PhD student working with Thomas Gen, with Elder Technologies and the like. So you should run your business. You should know how to reach out, how to show your potential, because opportunities come when people see your potential. conference <laughs> When the muchachin and gin, what a fit matto and tafubulo, and a millisra mill tower silun and nine. Eda mulam de no come and no but media chamber no be me termiloma. So, um, yeah, I just sent to Dr. Brackett if you manage to add Dr. Mark. Um, I did. Oh, okay, very good. So then I will stop. <laughs> I don't see him here though. Oh, yeah, he sent me a Yahoo, a Yahoo email. So, I think I copied you on that. Oh. I would like to see if uh, Engineer Seleshi is here too. It looks like he is. He is? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Good afternoon, all. Perfect. Hello, Engineer. Well, I think I'm going to go ahead and give you the opportunity since we're having um, issues connecting uh, with the other uh, two speakers, just to save time. Um, and I apologize, Fike, uh, are you done with your uh, answers to the question that you got with your, your response? 
Fakado. We will continue during the way for our discussion. This okay. Is, uh, like this is a special session by itself, so we'll continue later. Uh, let's continue. I, I see Dr. Seleshi is there, Engineer Seleshi from UK. Okay. If Mark is not there, maybe Engineer Seleshi might continue. Uh, Perfect. Yeah. I, I just so. didn't want to uh, cut you off while you're talking. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, well, um, thanks again. Thanks for joining us, uh, uh, Engineer Seleshi. Uh, well, I can't believe now we're about to arrive in UK. <laughs> he is from UK, so he's going to take us to UK. Okay. It's time for us to fly now. Let's go. Perfect. So our next speaker, as I said earlier, is um, Engineer Seleshi from UK. Uh, Engineer Seleshi has enormous uh, and tremendous experiences in building infrastructure and currently actually he's running uh, a building information management program virtually um welcome engineer uh we're so glad to have you here and it's a pleasure um of course um it, it's a pleasure to have you here again um uh, well thank you and you have seven minutes uh to go ahead and present appreciate it for being mindful about time too Thank you for the connection we had for a long time on LinkedIn, which you mentioned earlier. We don't know each other before. We, we can't hear you, uh, engineer. Can you yeah, we can't, like, it's really low. Your voice is really valuable. <coughs> okay, I'll try to. So yeah, as uh, I kind of mentioned, LinkedIn is the best place to uh, connect with professionals. And uh, that's where we, I met uh, and uh, about, uh, knew about USKPR yeah, from the inception during that time. And uh, I met him at Howard University when I went there for a talk on uh, building information modeling or building information management. And I'm not talking about building information management in deep today, but what, inspire, what is inspiring about building information management, which is uh, uh, modernizing the construction sector. So um, I myself have been working in construction industry for the last 20 years, and I've been going, whenever I'm going to Ethiopia, I'm going through uh, to different universities and companies uh, to, uh, from like 10 years ago, when BIM was not known at all, uh, that Engineer uh, Seleshi, I apologize. I don't think they, you know, they're hearing you. So okay. they're saying they're having problem hearing you. Would you mind? All right. Okay. I'll Just come back. Your voice a little bit. I appreciate it. All right. So um, I don't know if I can. I've been using this all the whole day, and I don't know why it's not working here. <laughs> So can you, can you, hear, you can't hear me at all or we can hear you just add a little bit volume so i think uh the zoom is the the meeting is actually using your computer not your microphone that is why i think so if you could uh, or get closer to the computer would that will pick it up the voice better or if you can uh, go to the meet settings and then change your microphone to to your headset okay hold on well, the mic is set up to the meeting is that can you hear me now Still very low. I can hear you. Uh, okay. I'm still in the office. So can you hear me better now? Or yeah, let's try now. That's yes, better. we can hear you. I think just continue making your voice a bit higher. So um, as I said, uh, I met Ricardo on LinkedIn, so uh, which is the best place to meet professional people. And uh, today I'm not talking about 
beam in the, in the in that but just what i'm saying what i'm trying to tell here is beam is modernizing the construction sector and in the last 10 years i've been trying in ethiopia to get the awareness on beam and i've been to different universities like such as gondor university osana hawasa uh, and adisawa university and also uh, some other companies as well uh, private and uh, governmental uh, uh, organizations uh, beam is um, like we are changing the work the way we do to digital as any other uh, any other professionals do on their work we are changing the way we do, we do the way we design the way we are building to in professional way and uh, so what what are, what are we using the uh, at the moment is the the way the benefits of beam is like it's improved collaboration and it also enhances visualization uh, also it saves cost and time and also the, for sustainability we can use uh, beam to enable analysis of energy efficiency material usage and environmental impact all these are the benefits of beam in the meantime in ethiopia the way the construction works needs a lot of improvement and we uh, we are working on that since i started uh, doing a presentation on beam things are changing very fast at the moment because most people are aware of beam and they are getting trained whether it is in in in, in ethiopia or online or virtual trainings and they are upgrading themselves most most young people are doing that so my advice to young people at the moment is to work on such kind of innovations whether it's the construction industry or any other industry we need to work hard on these kind of technologies at the moment people are as Fikadu uh, earlier said they are on Facebook, they are on Insta Instagram, but are we doing things that we should do? Or are we wasting our time? So that's what we, are, we have to analyze at the moment. So let's use our time, let's use our uh, mind and change ourselves, our family, our people, and our country. Thank you very much for the chance, for the chance you gave me. Um, I'm Thank you so much, uh, Engineer Seleshi, uh, for such a wonderful advice and wonderful presentation. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and open up for everybody. Um, if anybody has any questions, uh, this is time for us um, to reflect. Any questions for um, Engineer Seleshi? All right, it looks like we're all good. I have a question. Um, okay. you know, like, uh, tell us a little bit about your experience from the BEAM uh, services. Like, I know you have been uh, helping the Ethiopian engineers, uh, giving them trainings on Telegram and uh, uh, like mentoring them. So, what did you learn during this time? Uh, what can we uh, improve in the future, specifically in the field of engineering and connecting with Ethiopian universities and the like. I just want to hear a little bit more. Thank you. You're, you're on mute, Engineer Seleshi, you're on mute. Okay. Um, one thing I learned from uh, what I'm doing is whatever, whenever you do networking with someone, you are not only giving, you are also taking, you are also learning at the same time. So this gave me a chance to learn about Ethiopian construction a, a lot. At the same time, by connecting to people, I can see how, how people are working hard to change themselves. And at the same time, 
I, I feel like we we haven't got that much dedication in part of in some of the Ethiopian engineers. Um, because there are many engineers, for example, uh, who can do better, but uh, they can't change themselves at the moment. So we need to help them. In fact, as uh, for example, as Fakadu is doing at the moment on LinkedIn, there are so many people who are changing their lives by by connecting. So we have to develop that networking to change our service because by by getting the networking, we can help each other a lot, both inside and outside. So that's what I learned from the uh, the networking and from the connection and from what I'm doing at the moment. Perfect. Uh, we do have a couple more questions. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and read it for you. Um, engineer solution. Mm -hmm. Second. Well, this question is from Sosinna. Um, excuse me. Well, she is asking about how you know you've collaborated um, actually between your work in UK um, in the UK uh, to Ethiopia actually with Ethiopian um, mm. uh, you know yeah. professionals in actually internationally too that's her question yeah uh, the way we communicate is yeah it's uh, mostly online uh, virtually but the main thing is we have uh, after uh, when I was in Ethiopia, when I was going to Ethiopia and doing presentation in different universities, there were a couple of people who were who have the same interest and who have been doing the same thing. Uh, uh, one was from Germany, for example, another one was from USA, and the, uh, we had contacts in Ethiopia as well. So what we did is we formed the Ethiopia Beam Society. It's a, a society f established in twenty uh, in, in twenty twenty actually. So we formed that society, and now we have a member in that in that society, and we are communicating well with that uh, under that society, and we're doing like uh, we've got a Telegram group, as well as we've got um, we do some uh, events in Ethiopia, especially uh, the those who are working with those who are a member of the founding members of the uh, Ethiopian Beam Society who are residing in Ethiopia. They are prepared, they are uh, doing events like every four months. So, uh, and also when I'm going to Ethiopia or when the other person who's in Germany, his, his name is Dereje, when he's going to Ethiopia, uh, they, we are also do some kind of events like conferences and webinars. Um, um, seminars uh, and as such. So also we do, uh, we used to do uh, uh, fortnight webinars uh, from UK and from Germany to Ethiopia as well and inviting other professionals. So this communication now is a, a very easy, uh, it's very easy at the moment because of the online engagement we have uh, we in Ethiopia and other countries as well. That makes it very easy. Thank you so much, um, Engineer Slesh. I'm gonna go ahead and invite um, Ferdisan to go ahead and um, ask his question. You can go ahead, Ferdisan. We can't hear you. All right, I'm not able to hear anything from Fedisan. Um, we'll get back to uh, her, him, I'm sorry. Uh, there is another question in the chat box. Um, let me read it. Give me one second to have two. Uh, Nani, can you explain a little bit about your question, what you wanted to focus on? Uh, 
are you asking about developing uh, or how best we can develop, you know, and like no cost financial proposal or something? I apologize if you don't mind to speak about it. I really appreciate that. It's not clear. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and move to the next one. Uh, we can go, always go back to her. Um, the other question is from Nagash. Uh, he said that I graduated this year by dual major in civil and water resource engineering and want to study for my MSc degree. Um, can you recommend? So I think the question is, what can you recommend for his uh, journey, MSc journey? Uh, this this question might be a bit personal. Uh, I mean, uh, I I think you you should know your potential as well as the opportunities that you have around you or around somewhere, and maybe uh, combining those two, I think you better go with your own options what you have at um, at, at that time. Perfect. Uh, it looks like it's more personal and it's mm -hmm. more about knowing your passion and what you want to do in the future. Awesome. Right. Well, we're going to go to the next one. Uh, this one is from uh, Hapte. Uh, what differences you have seen or have you seen in construction projects start to com uh, completion process, start to completion process? I think he's asking about the process uh, mm -hmm. of construction from start to, you know, the in yeah, process uh, between UK and Ethiopia. I think it's just more on, um, you know. The main the thing I observed in um, the construction process between Ethiopia and UK is the main, the, uh, which is the main, the important thing is safety. The safety is compromising in, uh, factor in Ethiopia. I've seen a lot of uh, things that has, shouldn't happen when doing on construction sites. And that is the main thing that uh, need to be uh, improved in Ethiopia. That's my, my that one is my, one of my suggestion. And the second one is, um, I have seen some projects which are being idled for a long time. It's because of like uh, hiking prices of like materials and um, resources and workforce all these kind of things and that the contractors might be out of work due to due to that and uh, uh, some of the construction will uh, will be on uh, will be uh, you know stopping at one area and then uh, nothing is going to happen on that so i think the in the uk if the construct if there is a construction project there must be a good budget that will be allocated and uh, uh, that's I think, uh, and, and the project will be finished. Either there will be a delay most of the, in most cases in construction in most cases, but it, still it will be finished anyway. So I think we need to consider those kind of um, uh, scenarios for the UK and the UK. Uh, perfect. Thanks, uh, Engineer Silesh. Again, uh, this might be the last opportunity for. Um, a question. Uh, this is from Nani. Um, the question is, uh, which job or I would say business idea um, doesn't require an initial cost to start? It's just a more general one, I believe. Uh, but if you don't mind to say something about uh, about it from an engineering perspective, that would be much appreciated. I think what I can say on this one is, I think whatever business you are going to do, you need a kind of uh, starting cost or uh, any kind of funding to get you started. And then from there, you move on and you do your own profits and then you make, make your company bigger and bigger. Otherwise, I don't think that without, any, without no initial cost, I think nothing, nothing will happen. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, it was really wonderful to hear from you, engineer. 
Um, I think, I can I go ahead? Uh, let me see. I think there is one from the chat box. Um, well, uh, Workna is asking what your advice is um, for actually the challenging um, industry in Ethiopia. Uh, it's like just your advice, excuse me. I think a lot of people are trying to write, so it's not staying in there. Give me one second. Um, so literally just to make sure uh, a genuine and professional approach within, uh, you know, implementing a genuine and professional ap approach in Ethiopia within this uh, technology, within this uh, department. Uh, that's his question. And I apologize, everyone. Uh, this should be my last one. Um, is, that the, is that the question from? The question is from Workana. Workana, yeah. Um, I think uh, the construction industry, where well, um, the way I see it is, is facing challenges due to the first thing. The, the main thing is corruption. I can't say. And the second, uh, for example, what I heard is in uh, what the complaint I heard is to there is a a challenge that instead of spending the mo uh, spending money on the correct materials, there will be like use of cheaper materials as well. And also the other thing is, uh, I think the um, the the workforce in the construction industry needs uh updating and uh, uh training while they are working at the moment uh, i don't think most of them are doing that uh, so that will maybe improve the way the construction works in, in ethiopia um, but because i'm not involved a lot in there i can't say much to be honest but uh, what i can see is that especially the corruption is a little bit of uh, a problem for Ethiopian construction. Perfect. Thank you so much, Engineer Again, um, of course, Thank we you. do have like two more questions, but um, I wouldn't go for that now. I really apologize, uh, Lemmy and uh, Jabisa. Uh, we're going to go ahead and try to see if our presenters are here. If not, I will promise I'll, you know, give you the opportunity to ask your questions. I really appreciate that. Thank you. All Thank right. You uh, of course. Um, well, um, uh, okay. I'm not yeah. sure if I see Dr. Mark is in the room, so let's okay, try please see here. If Mike is working. Yes. Okay, perfect. Perfect. So I can go ahead and invite him then. Uh, perfect. Thank you. It's time for our next speaker. Um, I appreciate you guys' patience again. Um, our next speaker is uh, Professor Mark. Uh, welcome, Professor Mark. Um, Professor Mark is actually a head of the Department of Agricultural Leadership, Education and Communication at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. Um, he is gonna present about the leadership program and experience of the department of actually engaging in engaging international students in tips of success for uh, mainly international students. This distinguished professor has been enormously supporting um, international students, including Ethiopians. Uh, Professor Mark, it is a pleasure to have you here. Uh, you can go ahead and present. You do have uh, seven minutes. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Can you hear me okay? Absolutely. We can hear you. Very good. Well, it is a, it's a pleasure for me to be here um, with all of you today. And I want to thank um, Fikadu for the invitation to be a part of, of this group. And uh, my task is to take the next seven minutes and really talk about graduate education, higher education here in the United States in terms of what, uh, what are some strategies to be uh, successful in getting admitted into um, 
master's or PhD programs. And so um, I was, as I was introduced, I do lead a department that has um, uh, graduate degrees in leadership and in education and in communication. Um, and those are different than you might think. This has nothing to do with uh, politics or, or uh, getting into a, a life of a political job, but has everything to do with working in communities and helping to uh, build the lives of, of others. Um, in fact, our tagline in our department is developing human potential. And so the graduate degrees that we have can be applied across a wide variety of industries and professions. Um, and again, it has absolutely nothing to do with, with politics. If you recognize that a leader is uh, someone who has um, trained or become educated in how to be effective in interpersonal skills, um, small groups, or large organizations, we believe that leadership is something that can be learned, it can be um, taught, and it's not something that you are born with or, or ordained a leader. It has nothing to do with title, has everything to do with influence. And so um, that's where, where our programs really focus. But let me talk just a little bit about, uh, there's really um, a couple of things to think about in terms of what it takes to be successful in getting admission um, into an institution of higher education. Um, and the two aspects that I wanna focus my time on are really uh, number one about getting admitted to a program and the second one is obtaining funding to study uh, in the form of an assistantship. Um, getting admitted to a program um, is, is really all about the relationship that you have with that institution and with individuals at that institution as well as alignment with your goals, your interests, your passions, with what that program or those individuals do. And it, I look at it like any, anything else. If you were to apply for a job, the job that you would be most suited for would be the job that is looking for someone who has the skill sets that you have. And the closer you can align with those skill sets, the greater the opportunity you'll have to get that job whether you're applying for a grant, whether you are um, applying for admission to a university or applying to a job, it's all about how well do you align with what they're interested in. And so that's number one. It has to be a program that specializes in the area that you're interested in. And to do that takes a lot of investigation, a lot of work on the internet to find programs and places that align with what you're passionate about. And by that, I mean, you need to identify faculty whose priorities are the same things that you're passionate about. We get a lot of applications. We get hundreds of, of emails of people, and it looks like they're, they're just sending it out to dozens and dozens, if not hundreds of places, seeing if anyone will accept them. Um, that's not the approach that I'm talking about. Those are not emails that have any chance really of being successful. It's the individual that sends a personalized email introducing themselves and asking, this is what I see you're interested in. This is also something that I'm interested in. Are there opportunities for me to study there? And are there opportunities for funding? That's a really critical step in all of this, um, is to identify the programs and the faculty that align with your interests. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm really, I really wanna emphasize the need to establish relationship with individuals at these institutions. And I realize you say, well, that may be difficult to do because I'm on the other side of the world, but I'm not talking about just sending one email. If you find someone who's very interested about the things that you're interested in, and it seems like they're studying and investigating and researching that area, 
they're actively um, publishing in that area. Then an, an initial email is great, um, but then follow up with that. And if that person is interested, um, then it can go to a phone call, it can go to a Zoom call, um, but really beginning to identify people and trying to initiate a relationship. Um, having looked at someone's website, finding a faculty member who is interested in what you're interested and then sending in an application doesn't usually bring success from my experience. It takes somebody on faculty who says, yes, I know that person. I've interacted with that person. I met them at a conference or I had a Zoom call with them. We've been emailing back and forth for months. Yes, I know this person and I'm interested in bringing them in as a graduate student and interested in giving them funding. That's really what we're looking for. In other words, when those faculty are considering admitting potential graduate students or providing funding for potential graduate students, it's all about relationship. And so that's really, um, really critical. Then when it comes to application, I think it's important to make sure that you recognize all the pieces that are necessary in a graduate um, application. Many places will require the, the GRE or the graduate record exam and that you have taken it within a, a fairly recent period of time. In our program, we require that the, the GRE scores be within the last uh, five years, I believe it is. And so recognizing that that takes time to schedule taking the exam, it takes time for the processing of your scores, and then it also takes time to have those scores sent to the institution you're interested in, um, is enough time that you have to be thinking and planning um, well ahead. And then recognize what are the other components of an application and make sure that you give yourself the best opportunity to present your best work. So a lot of times there will be an application, online application. Um, there will be opportunity to submit um, transcripts from the institutions you've studied at. There will also be an opportunity for people to write letters of recommendation, serve as reference for you. And then many times it will also um, require some type of writing sample. Uh, maybe it's a um, maybe it's a, a copy of some writing you've done in, in the past. Maybe it's answering questions in an essay form. Uh, maybe it's both of those. But it's really critical that your application be put together as neatly and as accurately as possible. In other words, uh, having no spelling errors, having no grammar errors, um, not leaving anything blank. One of the things that um, we see from uh, quite often is people asking others to write letters of recommendation for them, and they use that same letter in various applications. And I realize that if you're applying to many different places, it can be efficient to use the same letters, but one of the surest ways to eliminate an application is when we see a letter of recommendation that misstates the institution they're applying for, or it misstates the program they're applying for, or if it includes names of faculty that aren't even in that department. In other words, the, the person applying was too quick to submit the letters of recommendation and didn't take the time to realize that the name of the institution wasn't correct the name of the program or the degree wasn't correct, and that's really, really um, important. That will eliminate an application right away. And you may have spent 20 hours pulling together all the pieces. Uh, you may have spent the money to take the GRE exam, but if a letter of recommendation uh, that's misstated could throw it out. And the last thing I'll talk about very quickly uh, as my time wraps up is, is thinking about the funding um, to study. And I realize that no one 
can afford to be in a PhD program that doesn't pay them an assistant shift. And so uh, it's important to recognize how much the assistant shift is for. And what I recommend is that because the expenses for international students can be higher than the expenses for domestic students, it's important for you to recognize what the cost of living is for where that university is located. For instance, um, I'm not pleased to say the level of assistantship that we provide does not adequately provide for an international PhD student, even though it seems like a lot of money. So we pay about 20,000 US dollars per year for a PhD student. And I know that seems like an enormous amount of money, but I'm here to tell you that $20,000 in Lincoln, Nebraska, where our university is located, is not enough for you to survive well while you're working on your PhD. And Fakadu can, can testify to this, that there are places that provide far more money, far greater money um, for you to study. And I would really encourage you to think hard about um, whether or not you can afford to live because $20,000 in Lincoln, Nebraska is not enough for an international student to meet all of their needs. Um, and I'm embarrassed to say that that's how little we provide and I wish we could provide more, but we don't have the same resource base as many other institutions have. And so that, that's something I think that's very, very critical to think about. Um, if you come here with a family, that's an even greater financial pressure um, on the limited amount of resources that we have. And so even though you might think, if I got admitted and someone's giving me an assistantship, that's a great thing, I'll figure it out. You really want to make sure that you've thought through all of the finances before you say yes and pursue this because it, it may not be as lucrative as you think it is. And so with that, I know those are uh, those are some very big topics that we talked about, um, but I wanna make sure that we have time for, for uh, questions and answers too. I appreciate it, uh, Professor. Thank you so much for your time again and for such a wonderful presentation. I'm pretty sure a lot of us are taking notes and you know, getting such you know a golden advice series because uh, that means a lot um any questions from the audience i'll go ahead and read uh, from the chat box but if anybody one would like to raise his or her hands that'll be perfect all right so i'm gonna go ahead and uh read the questions in the chat box Okay, well, so, gosh, give me one second, please. It's a little, oh. Does the tag is still there? Yeah, I'd like to say thank you. Uh, Professor Mark, uh, I'm a witness of all the support being provided and uh, the name of the Ethiopian use, the name of US Ethiopia, I really would like to acknowledge and uh, uh, witness the amount of guidance and support I'm getting from the Department of Agri Agricultural Leadership, Education and Communication. And I can boldly say that really this is a very great place to learn about ways to develop human potentials, the name and really the services go together. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to say thank you so much for all the support you are providing to me. To me. You are also serving the Ethiopian youth, you are serving as Ethiopia, so thank you. Thank you, Fikadu. You are a tremendous ambassador for Ethiopia and in you, uh, you align with our department's core values of excellence very, very well. And um, it's a pleasure having you in our department. 
Wonderful. I think uh, Tizit has got uh, technical problems, so I'll jump in until she comes in. Uh, so uh, absolutely great points raised uh, uh, by Professor Balchwad. I uh, I hope everybody was taking notes, and uh, we'll share some of those as well in our in our chats. So I am a testament to I I I came to the United States uh, as a PhD student to the University of South Carolina in 2010 is when I joined, and and at that time I had. Uh, a few phone conversations from Ethiopia uh, everyone. With, with the department Sorry. chair, with the department chair, and also with the graduate admission uh, person at the University of South Carolina. So creating relationships, and uh, and I, I I did not realize how how selective the programs are when I was applying from Ethiopia. And after coming here through conversation, I was one of the eight students that came into that. Uh, department for that year, but that's eight students joining out of hundreds of applications. So that's something that, you know, you pointed out really well that creating relationships, talking to the department chair, reading a paper and trying to understand that paper and talking about those papers. And those are really important and communication skills. So really, really thank you for your time and for really excellent tips. I appreciate those comments because uh, you give a you give a testimony. I think to to how important that is, and you know, every, every one of us. If if I'm applying to a grant, um, I want to I want to call the program officer uh, uh, who is administering that grant, and I want to to get as much information from them as I possibly can. I want their suggestions for what can they tell me to help make my proposal as strong as possible. What are the things that they prioritize that maybe wasn't listed in the, in the call for proposals? Um, what, are, what are the tips that they would suggest that reviewers are looking for? So, so I, I'm not necessarily seeking an unfair advantage, but I am recognizing that that relationship is important and that once you have that relationship established, um, what I what I what I hate to see, what saddens me, is an applicant to a graduate program who spends an enormous amount of time on their application and a very, very limited amount of time on making a connection with that department. They go, they go maybe to a website, find uh, an, an email link that they cut and paste, and they spend about 15 seconds with a, a form email. Um, and consider that to be the connection uh, that they made is satisfactory. And, and it's sad because none of us like to waste our time, but if you're going to spend a 20 hours, for instance, on your application, surely a few hours spent on trying to create a relationship through conversation and dialogue um, is, is time well spent, time well invested. Thank you. Back to you, Tizita. I think uh, you, you've come in. So. Yeah, I appreciate it, um, Professor, and thank you so much, uh, Dr. Barakat. For some reason, I get kicked out of the meeting, um, which is really an awesome internet. <laughs> thank you so much uh, for understanding. Uh, well, I can't be able to access any of the questions uh, in the chat box for some reason. So, so if I'll, I'll read them, I'll read a couple mind. of them, maybe Thank you. one or two, if you, if you, if you have the time. Um, so one of the okay. questions, I'm going to pick uh, a few because there's, there's, there's quite a lot of questions, but one of the questions is, uh, it, it delves about, talks about, you know, publications, requirement of publications for admission to graduate school. Is there a publication requirement? Uh, um, any thoughts on that? Yeah, and that's a that's a great question, and I realize that I'm I'm representing all fields, all disciplines, all institutions of higher education, and every one of them is very, very, very different. And I think the best advice that I could give in answering this question is that there's there's no one size that fits all, and by establishing that relationship, establishing a contact at an institution, you can begin to ask those questions and you can begin to get that inside information that 
that specific questions uh, can get answered because it it's it's impossible to try and collapse all of the disciplines of medicine and engineering and business uh, and and economics into this is the one thing that you should do. It really comes down to the specific discipline, the profession, the industry, the specific institution, and that particular college. And it's impossible to know what that is unless you're willing to invest the time in, in reaching out to someone um, and, and beginning to ask those questions specifically. Because, you know, here's, here's what happens at our institution. We, we pull all of the applications from uh, the web, we, we bring them down, we give those out to the committee, and then there is a meeting date. And we sit in a we sit in a room, and all of the faculty are around the table, and we go one by one through all of the applications, and we ask, does anyone know this individual? Has anyone talked with this individual? And it makes all the difference when a faculty member will say, yes, I have spoken to Fakadu. We have been emailing for the last several months. Um, we've been working on a project together, or we had a Zoom conversation. And if multiple faculty are able to, to provide that um, testimonial, that's even better. But when no one around the table has ever spoken to or has ever heard from that particular applicant, there's very, very little chance that they'll get considered. Perfect. So by creating by creating a relationship, talking to the, some, someone in the department, someone is essentially creating uh, a voice in the room for themselves. And that's, uh, that's a great way to put it. Yeah, so that's very, very important. Last question, what are you looking for in recommendation letters? Like, uh, what are your expectations of a good recommendation letter? That's a great question. Uh, I know it's difficult when you're applying to many different institutions to expect the letters that are written on your behalf to be tailored to that specific institution or that specific program. Uh, but I but I believe the ones that can be the most specific and the most personal uh, are, are the best. And so if you have a if you have a relationship with a, a, a person who's writing letters of recommendation, it's good to have a paragraph that lists your um, educational abilities. In other words, it's important for that person to speak to your ability to succeed in school. I think being well-rounded is also important to be able to show what sort of experiences, whether that's job experiences, um, uh, community experiences, volunteering, that's important. But if that person writing the letter can say, this student will succeed at your university, University of Nebraska Lincoln, and will thrive in the leadership PhD because that's a passion of theirs. And if they can work with this individual and specifically name them, that's a powerful, letter of recommendation. And I realize not everyone is has the time to write those kinds of letters, but those are the pieces that I think are very important. The, the, the ones that I would say that aren't successful are the letters that don't speak to the student's ability to be academically successful. And not to be rude, but many times we'll see letters that talk about the personality of the individual. They're such a nice person. They're very kind. Um, and although that's important, that doesn't help make decisions about whether or not they will be successful in the degree program. Because it, at the end of the day, no one wants to fail in a graduate degree program. And no one wants to have to leave without having achieved what they came there for. No one wants to kick out someone because they haven't been able to academically succeed. 
And so really it's all about the academics and it's all about the, the, the work ethic of that individual and for them to be um, a contributor to the department, to the program and so forth. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Professor. I really appreciate your uh, explanation and elaboration about you know the process and what we have to look in what are the things that we have to consider uh, when it comes to you know approaching a graduate school absolutely crucial i think we gotta take notes that actually works to um it's just a similar approach uh, with job search that's mm -hmm. what we experience in here too so please take a note that's really great um explanation and elaboration and it's really insightful thank you so much professor um attendees uh i really really apologize we're really running out of time so i gotta cut here um however uh for a question that is raised by andersa uh we can answer that uh Fike, if you don't mind to put your uh yes ethiopia email address so that you know she can you know join us um again for uh sultan um i really apologize again uh we have to move forward sorry um i know would love to hear more from professor uh however unfortunately we're really uh constrained oh. in time <laughs> so thank you so much again um i, I believe we can also answer your question sultan if you don't mind to email us uh Fike is gonna put in uh, you know his email address down there Thank you so much. Well, um, thank you so much, everyone, for your patience, for your active engagement. It's really awesome to, hit, to see actually everybody getting engaged, and actually it's really impressive to see. Everyone is enjoying the, uh, the conference. Awesome. So um, I know we got a rush um, because we do have panel discussions, and uh, also we have one more uh, speaker who is, um, uh, Dr. Naga, um, if, Dr. Naga, if you're still here, I can go ahead and give you a chance. Uh, even though we're really like you know uh, limited in time, um, I'll go go ahead and give you seven minutes. Um, are you here, Dr. Naga, so that I can? Yes, go. I'm here. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Dr. Naga. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I'll go ahead and uh, provide a brief introduction about Dr. Naga. Uh, well, Dr. Naga is taking us back to Ohio from University of Nebraska. Um, welcome, Dr. Naga. Um, it's really a pleasure to have you here with us. Um, for us, uh, Dr. Naga is actually, uh, he's an Ethiopian American scholar, really diligent and passionate about making a difference in education. Uh, he has done innovative education programs in the US in Africa. Welcome again, Dr. Nekka. Uh, it's a pleasure having you here. You do have seven minutes to uh, present. Okay, Tizeta, thank you for uh, inviting me. I'm sorry, there is a background noise here. Uh, can you hear me well? Absolutely, we can hear you. Okay. Thank you so much thank for coming. Okay, thank you. Just to give you a rundown of my uh, education background, I'm a graduate of Addis Ababa University uh, majoring in pedagogical sciences and I have uh, uh, another first degree in accounting from Asmara University and I have a master's degree from Marshall University here in the United States in information system and a master's degree from uh, Leeds University in England in, in education and uh, my PhD is from uh, uh, the University of Adelaide in South Australia so I have been in education for many, many years and I've been a, a teacher here in the United States for 21 years. And I've taught at Addis Ababa University, Asmara University and several other colleges in Australia. And currently I'm running an education center here in Ohio and uh, we, are, we have uh, virtual uh, classes teaching English to students in Addis and in Djibouti, and there are other students in Europe as well. Most of them are of Ethiopian ancestry, 
Um, I'm uh, impressed by your organization and uh, I'm really motivated to work with you. Uh, uh, as, a, as, a, as, a, I don't know, uh, as you also mentioned, um, my business has been, uh, uh, we have been in business for, for 10 years now, and we have also been uh, approved by USAID, and that's one thing I want to encourage you uh, to get your organization get approved, because that's where you can get grants, uh, apply for grants at least, so we can work on that one. I have uh, strong relationships with different institutions in Addis, particularly with Addis Ababa University. Currently, as we speak, I teach two doctoral classes uh, uh, for the Institute of Educational Research at uh, Addis Ababa University. I'm also working with the Kotobe University of Education. We are doing several things with them. And we're also very much into uh, designing, developing, and uh, delivering uh, learning management uh, courses on learning management systems. I think that's one thing probably we can do. I know several people did mention how we can train um, students. I, 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 was, I was in this meeting the very, the very first hour and then left and, and then came back again. So I have heard some of the issues that you have and i think those are the things we can uh, uh, work together to improve the uh, uh, or at least help you achieve your your objectives so i just want to be brief and then if you have any questions feel free to ask me thank you thank you so much uh, dr naga this is really awesome presentation and thanks for your contribution to our uh, generation, our country, and our people. Uh, that's really uh, uh, imperative to you know everyone. Um, so your presentation was really uh, insightful. I hope everyone learned a lot from Dr. Nagas' presentation. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and open up um, for Q and A. If anybody has any questions, uh, well, we're here for you. I would like to ask Dr. Negga, first place, thank you so much yeah, for accepting our, our invitation with just one single call. We didn't know each other. It's Abraham that introduced me to you. It's really sometimes amazing that we don't know all these resourceful uh, people in our surroundings, especially with Ethiopian youth, Ethiopian scholars. I think we need to work more. Dr. Negga, how's your schedule today? Can you stay a little bit longer? And also, I just wanted to know if you have any other commitments, how long can we discuss? Yeah, you are mute. You are mute. Tom. I just wanted to know. 30 minutes. Like, I can stay for 30 minutes. OK. Very good. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I just wanted to start by asking, like, how can we work together if you are leaving, if you don't stay for the discussion after uh, this um, uh, session? We want to know what's the best way to work with Yes Ethiopia. In Yes Ethiopia, we have more than 50,000 young people. Some of them are from remote parts of Ethiopia, from Gambilla, Hassosa, you know, from Jinka, from South Omo, from Jigjiga, uh, Samara, and the like. Also, a lot of them in Addis Ababa, in all the capitals, also outside Ethiopia. What is the best way that we can establish a relationship, start working together? Because a lot of young people would have this question. How can I work with Dr. Nagga? What is the way? So please speak about that. And I'm very grateful. And thank you so much for what you're doing. Just listening to your bio is so inspiring. Thank you. Thank you, Fukado. Um... You mentioned Jigjiga, so I'm originally from Jigjiga. So um, I have built a learning management system for for Jigjiga. Um, it's ecamel.net. You would see we have developed uh, content from kindergarten up to up to high school level. For instance, in math, we have developed math 
in Amharic, we have developed math in English, and we have translated the English math, which is basically based on the uh, common core standards here in the United States into, into Amharic. And we have also Amharic content. If you go, if you go to education.com, uh, we have several sites that's equipped with learning management systems because my, what I'm trying to do is, uh, as you can see, even uh, prominent universities in Addis do not have learning manage management systems, most of them or they are probably at the initial stage of building it. So I'm, I'm using learning, uh, uh, LearnDash as a learning management system and try to build uh, online and virtual learning on, on that platform. So I think that would be one area where we can develop a learning management system for your users. And I know you have several experts in different fields and uh, um, we can use that platform as a way to uh, to work together, I, um, I we can also do training. We can provide uh, training. I do give several trainings. I have uh, uh, extensive experience in intercultural and intercultural communication. So we can uh, help the the youth to to have some basic skills in communicating with people from different uh, linguistic and cultural background. So that would be another area that uh, we can help. Um, and as I said, we have really enough content in math and in language arts, which I, we developed it in uh, past 10 years here in my institute. And I would be more than happy to give for free. If you have students, there, are, there would be running courses, but other courses, including getting domain and then uh, all that uh, can be, uh, can take care of that. But we can also work as um, work together, you know, to get some kind of grant with from USAID. Okay, that's I believe that's very very important. And and then uh, as as we go further, uh, we look into the problems that arise and we try to tackle them. You know, from from different corners. We have uh, um, I have it very international experience, as as you said as you uh, as you heard so we will use my um experience in the, in the business world as well so um most important thing is is the willingness to work so one thing i really want to um thank you for is that at this day and age when our country is entangled in multi-faceted and um, multi-layered problems uh, when you are trying to bring all these diverse people together, that means a lot to me. So I think we have to go beyond what we see there are, and education is, is really a key problem. All we have is related to education. So if we are the pioneers in uh, tackling this problem as one, as you said, you and I never met before, never, know each other, but I always work with anyone interested to change the education landscape in Ethiopia. That's what I have been doing for over 40 years, and I never get tired, and I would continue to contribute to the field of education because you call, I have one daughter, she's in medical school, a second year student now, her name is Abigail. For me, education means just like that. You mentioned the name education, as if you have called my daughter's name, so I, I listen to you very carefully. So um, I'm more than happy to work with you, especially with the youth like you. I have also three employees. I have trained them online. They are all in Ethiopia and they work for me. So um, they, they do it online. I give them the training. We have enormous potential back home. It's just a matter of tapping to it because these are young people who just need uh, way to show them as I don't know if I mentioned this to you I have done most of my degrees on scholarships and and I'm also a Fulbright senior scholar I am a Carnegie African diaspora fellow I'm a British Council scholar I'm overseas postgraduate research scholar so I'm um, very well uh, and and now I would also be English fellow maybe in a month or so I'll get that and then 
uh, there's another fellowship I have also applied uh, that would take me to add this to, to work. So just, to, to just in brief, I think there are several avenues that we can work together and I'm, I'm willing to, uh, to join in. Thank you. I'm super, super happy. I'm very sure the others are also feeling the same. So, yeah, God bless you. And I'm very Absolutely. happy that we made. Thank you. Absolutely, Fiki. Thank you so much. We're so impressed uh, with Dr. Nagas, you know, contribution. And of course, looking forward his contributions, more contributions to the youth, to, you know, everyone uh, who would like to, uh, you know, grow, learn and grow um i apologize uh unfortunately we're running out of time so what i'm gonna do is if possible D uh, dr naga is that possible if uh you know i know i see like a lot of questions on the chat box uh do you mind actually uh if they like those people can actually connect you via linkedin um and then if possible whenever you get a chance you can go ahead and you know um answer their inquiries that's if possible absolutely oh thank you thank you so much uh well uh i hope um Susie, you guys are not like mad to, at me yes Susie, i would like to add that i can host dr naga during our weekly sessions on saturdays as okay, you know every awesome. saturday at 6 p.m ethiopian time we, we have a meeting regular sessions so dr naga we can arrange another time i look like there are a lot of questions lining up and myself Absolutely. have many questions so i just need more time with you so let's have another session one of the coming saturdays thank you absolutely yeah if you don't mind uh dr naga that would be really you know greatly appreciated um if you can join us for one of our sessions so that you can answer as many questions as possible um, unfortunately we're really constrained in time today <laughs> so uh what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go ahead and um again i really apologize um our audience uh we're gonna connect you guys don't worry uh keep in touch um we're gonna connect you with dr naka and other uh professionals and of course if you have questions you can always send it to a uh, yes ethiopia's email address and then we can uh, address your questions as quick as we can well um if i know uh, i'm not you know it's just from my side i'm not leading um you know questions to continue unfortunately because of time so i'm gonna go ahead and uh um introduce you guys uh with sosena uh, sosena is our uh, treasurer uh, of the board of directors for yes um so Sina, if you're here which i'm sure you're here uh, i'm gonna go ahead and you know let you introduce yourself and uh go ahead and uh, lead uh the rest of the panel discussion thank you so much and it was really awesome uh you know working with you guys thank you thank you so much Tazita. Uh, I'm guessing everyone can hear me. Hello, I'm Sosana. Um, I am the treasurer for YES, a USA team. Uh, my background is in user experience research, and I am currently working in uh, quality engineering. Um, I'm really excited to introduce you guys to uh, our panel uh, discussion members. Um, so that includes uh, Dr. Yiligan Fasa, um, Dr. Mary Willis, uh, Mr. Saifu Ibsa, Iyob Waldahanna, and um, representatives from the embassy in DC as well as Rome. So if you're here, please um, unmute yourself and I think we can start introducing uh, our, our panel speakers in the next uh, seven minutes. Yeah, thanks, so, so now We have one speaker also uh, Faisal he didn't present in the morning we have moved him to the afternoon session because we have like some active work in Addis Ababa so Faisal is now in the room so I just wanted to add that he's waiting thank you um, I apologize Sina, again um, uh, we also would like to add uh, Dr. Barakat to talk about his uh, you know educational uh, business that he's uh, conducting currently 
I will talk about it, I think. I will miss it on the agenda before. I appreciate it. Thanks for your consideration. Yep, sounds great. And let me also mention the theme of this panel discussion is experiences working globally um, and in Ethiopia and ways that we can continue forward. So maybe if we can start with Seifu, if you can introduce yourself in a minute or so, and then we can continue introducing everybody else. Thank you. Oh, myself, you mean? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, my name is Seiku Ipsa, and I have been involved with uh, the Cadus CS Ethiopia team uh, for about uh, six months or so, a little more than that. Um, I have been very much encouraged by what he, ha he has been doing uh, since he started a few years back, uh, following him on LinkedIn. Um, it was quite a, ple a pleasure really working with him and I was able to meet with him in person and and establish a nonprofit organization here in the US. Um, it is really a pleasure working with every one of the uh, uh, board members. My involvement, if I may take a few more minutes, uh, uh, Sosana, my involvement with the Ethiopian youth goes back to 2005, 2006 time frame. Um, I live in California. I've been in California for about 42 years. But back in 2006, as I was working on a couple of projects uh, in my birth village, a water project and uh, and a preschool building uh, project, um, a young man. Uh, he's a he was a principal of the elementary school. Took me aside and and said to me you know, a word that I will never forget. 95% of the students that pass eighth grade, you know, become farmers in this village, in this area. If you can help us with that, that would be wonderful. So I, uh, that resonated with me and I decided to do something about it. So I spoke with my brother who was, uh, um, retired at the time, he was working for Ethiopian Airlines. So together we decided to help out the kids that are passing the national exam of eighth grade and send them to a nearby uh, town where they can be educated. So we were paying for their rent, providing them with, uh, with uh, you know, mat mattresses and closings and stuff like that. So initially my objective was to help just about 10 kids, and maybe the top 10 students, but he decided to take all 43 students that passed that year and ed educate them. So the next year, it, it happened to be 100, and then they raised to 150, and then to 200, etc. So for the last 15 years, we've been sending kids to uh, nearby high school, um, so that they can get educated. I'm happy to report that 98, 98 of them graduated with a degree so far and still counting. And uh, there's also a high school that we built in my village. Uh, we built together my, with my brother and others uh, about six preschools and two elementary schools, about eight water projects. This has been uh, an ongoing uh, passion for me, coupled with compassion. You can have a passion, but if you don't have the compassion, you cannot do uh, much. But anyway, um, I got involved. My, my, I got involved with Yes Ethiopia because of my background with uh, the young, and uh, I'm so happy I'm doing this. Uh, a great man, a visionary, Tukadu, for all Ethiopia. We need many of you like maybe about uh if, if we can get ten thousand tukadus we'll be very happy the country will be very happy thank you i'm i'm done so Sina. thank you Seifu. uh dr mary would you like to continue next and introduce yourself yes um i'm uh mary willis and uh i'm at missouri state university i'm a department head for sociology anthropology and gerontology um, do you want me to go ahead and explain um, how I became a part of this, or what, what's best? 
Yes, please, Dr. Willis, go oh. ahead and tell us oh. more. <laughs> okay. Well, um, uh, I have to say that my first connection to Ethiopia uh, came in graduate school. And it reminds me, and is a sort of repeat theme about having relationships with people. But my uh, first day in, in my graduate program in, at Washington University in St. Louis, I had an Ethiopian uh, uh, fellow student who, who came to the meeting. We became very, very dear friends. And um, from that uh, day forward, we worked together um, on all kinds of projects. We both successfully defended our PhDs. Um, Dr. Shamela Spayana uh, and I were, were uh, again, both PhDs in anthropology, we are now, and uh, Dr. Bayana went back to, um, to Ethiopia, and at one point in time, there was a position open at University of Nebraska, where I taught for 22 years, and I knew him and contacted him and asked him to to apply. So he came to Nebraska and, and began uh, teaching. That was a relationship that came out of, um, again, the graduate school and friendship. While we worked together, we decided to apply for um, an international science education grant through the US Department of Agriculture. And um, that, that was partly because um, there were at least six Ethiopian scholars at that time at University of Nebraska. And we felt this was really um, a very good thing to do to somehow connect uh, the, the um, programs at University of Nebraska with Ethiopia. So Dr. Bayana and I wrote the grant and uh, we were successful. It was to set up um, a study abroad program, an education abroad program. So um, we did that. Uh, in short order, and I'll tell you about that in a moment. Um, so uh, Dr. Bayana came to the U.S. Uh, for his PhD because he um, had finished a master's degree at um, in Addis, and he was uh, a available to conduct some research when a scholar from the U.S. came uh, to, to look for some, um, some support. So he ended up working on a program in the Awash National Park. And it was uh, his biology background that let him uh, do that work. Um, and, and that is a good illustration, again, of making relationships and friendships. He had no idea that would lead to the possibility of a PhD in the future. But indeed, uh, when, when the project was, was over and needed to continue, uh, Dr. Bayana had that opportunity. I, too, got a chance for a PhD because I was doing a, a contract work in Madagascar, and I met my future um, advisor uh, in, in that project and program. Again, having no idea that the work I did would come, would lead to a relationship and then a PhD. So fast forward to uh, Nebraska. I can't remember exactly the year. It would have been somewhere around um, 2012. Uh, we apply, Dr. Bayan is in the U.S., we're working at the same university, having been good friends for a long time. Uh, we apply for this grant to go to Ethiopia. So we start in 2014, and um, we did um, education abroad programs bringing U.S. students from University of Nebraska uh, to Ethiopia um, uh, 2014, 2015, 2016. Um, 2017 and 2018, we couldn't uh, travel because Ethiopia had a state of emergency in 2016. So that stopped our work for two years, kept in touch with everyone, um, got back to Ethiopia in 2018 and 2019, then COVID hit. Um, and uh, so I, in, in, 20, in 2017, I decided I cannot let this education abroad program go and i set up to go to work in um in zambia same program same kinds of ideas same kinds of setup and um uh, sorry for all of this sort of ongoing description but what i want you to understand is that uh, you never know how opportunities will come along 
and when you get the chance to work um, on a project or a program, um, don't be discouraged that it might not be exactly where you hope to be. It could lead to something. So again, we set up the program. We have this break in the program. And um, I uh, did the program in Zambia alone, 2017, 2018. Then COVID hit. And um, my colleague that I worked with in Zambia very sadly got COVID and, uh, and died. And so I was without a colleague. And um, I thought about who do I know that has worked on this project? Well, I had a colleague in Hawassa, at Hawassa University, um, Alazar Kirabel Kora, and I contacted him and asked if I flew him to Zambia, would he help me? Uh, do this this course in this education project that has now turned into um, a, a permanent um, and long-term relationship uh, both for the study abroad which I'm now conducting out of uh, Missouri but also um, it's a, a relationship for um, Alazar he very well may end up um, in a, a graduate program and he's made new contacts in Zambia that could also be uh, for him uh, a possible relationship. Meanwhile, um, as we, um, just as COVID was happening, um, I had worked with Fike and I had worked with um, another Ethiopian uh, scholar at Hawassa, uh, as well as Alazar. And during our study abroad, we noted that in the coffee regions where we were working, uh, that uh, there were, um, parts of the coffee cherry that were being uh, thrown out and they were causing environmental trouble. They had some nutrition in them. And so we wrote a grant, an internal grant, uh, to work on that project. It's still ongoing and has had a few hiccups because of the COVID. But um, I brought um, and, and had money to bring um, Fike and Alazar to the US to work on our project uh, in, 2020, I think 2020. And then again, um, we, we uh, mapped out the project, spoke to people. Um, they were in the US, I think a month or six weeks. They went home and uh, just before COVID hit, they came back again um, before it was really problematic. Um, yes, sorry, Dr. Mary, to interrupt you. Sure. Uh, can you keep it to one more minute and then yeah. We'll yes, come back I will. To, to questions. I, yes, Thanks I will. Thank you so much for sharing your experience, yes. Yes. Um, anyway, they came back. Um, and in fact, that's now how both Fike and um, Amro uh, Tedessa got into University of Nebraska because they came on the coffee project and they were able to meet um, scholars. So all of these relationships are, are, are uh, about working on a project, meeting people in a context and place where you might not um, necessarily uh, have your goal met, but you're building skills and you're having opportunities that you may not know uh, will come in the future. Definitely. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. And then next, I'd like to invite Faisal to tell us about uh, your experience with remote jobs and the company you have. All right, thank you so much uh, for the invite to everyone in Nebraska, go Huskers. And uh, Fakadu, thank you for uh, hosting this event. Um, how do I share my screen? Can I get permission? I do have a little presentation prepared. I will give you uh, permission for like just a minute. All right. Yeah, thanks so much, Dr. Willis. You are the reason for why we are in US and how Yes Ethiopia has started. And Faisal now is working with Yes Ethiopia and he's supporting many young people to work from home in Addis Ababa. So both of you from Nebraska, from Missouri, uh, I thank you so much. There is no enough time. We also would like to discuss more if you stay, Dr. Willis and Alazar. Yeah, depending on your time. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. And Fike, I think you launched, yes, Ethiopia out of my house. So. Exactly. That is on your bed. I was in. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm going to speak about that later. I'm just kind of under time pressure. So, yeah, but God bless you. Thanks so much. All right. Um, you never told me that part of the SCTOP. I forgot that it was launched in uh, Missouri. Should have been Nebraska, nope, but we'll, we'll talk Missouri. about He's that in later. Nebraska. Dr. Oh, Willis yeah, moved to a... Missouri recently. She was in Nebraska. Okay. All right. Um, cool. So since we are limited on time, I will go ahead and uh, dive right into this. Uh, like I said, Fukaru, thank you for you know all the work that you're doing. Definitely a, an inspiration uh, for all of us, including myself. And uh, thank you everyone for uh, attending this. Uh, so uh, briefly, I'm just going to be talking on the topic of uh, Ethiopia slash Africa's uh, potential in business uh, process outsourcing and uh, the opportunities that lie uh, ahead of us. Uh, so with that said, uh, before I even get into the, the topic that I'm here to talk about, um, uh, why should you listen to me and why should you care? Uh, so a little background on me, uh, I was born and raised in Ethiopia until the age of 12, immigrated to the US uh, at uh, the age of 12 and lived here since then. It wasn't until uh, COVID 2019 that I went back to Ethiopia when uh, working remotely uh, became a possibility. Uh, so I was working for a startup here in Austin, Texas uh, that allowed us to go remote. So I decided to pack up, go to Ethiopia for the first time in a really long time. Um, and during my time in Ethiopia, I was, uh, you know, for us that are too accustomed to the West here or that are living here in the States, uh, we often get detached from Ethiopia or Africa in general and uh, everything that's out there. Uh, it's easy even for us to get sucked up into what the media sells us on, uh, on Ethiopia or Africa and uh, where they are as an economy, as a country. And when I was out there, I was extremely surprised in terms of, uh, you know, people's ability to speak English, right? Uh, you know, these are basic things, but um, when you live in America for so long and you hear about the constant issues uh, in, in Africa, you forget there's a completely different world out there. And um, so I was just extremely surprised by all the people I was meeting out there, the level of uh, education and uh, hearing stories of people that are graduating in computer science or engineering and uh, different STEM fields that uh, were not able to, to find a job. So during that time, I decided to say, hey, you know, uh, I'm gonna pack up, start a business here. And I definitely saw an opportunity for us to tap into the outsourcing uh, market because I have worked with um, outsourcing. Uh, I had worked with outsourcing in India and the Philippines, which is uh, where a lot of the outsourcing started. But uh, before you know, taking a big step like that and expanding into the U.S. or other markets, uh, I thought it was very important for me to get acquainted with the the local market in Ethiopia and the local realities. It's easy to look at things from the outside and you know think everything is going to be perfect. So with that, uh, before thinking outside of the country, I thought it was uh, a good idea to start locally. So for the past two years, uh, I've been building on the IT solutions. As of today, uh, we have uh, 10, 10 full-time employees as well as uh, four contractors that we're working with. And we've worked with over 60 clients around uh, digital marketing as well as uh, IT solutions and the whole purpose of that was to build a foundation for us to go ahead and offer uh, outsourcing services uh, the most I think the the most amazing thing that we have going for us right now is the fact that uh, 100 percent of our team is remote uh, which has its own set of challenges but as we continue to explore ways to uh, expand beyond Ethiopia uh, I think it's important to take into account that talent within Ethiopia alone or anywhere in Africa isn't just in Addis Ababa. I think there's a lot of emphasis that's being put on, um, uh, on what's, you know, in the, in the capital. So right now we have team members in Adama, Awasa, and uh, across different regions, which, uh, you know, I think that is setting up a great foundation for us and um, setting a good example for, uh, for the country in, in general. All right, so um, why now? Why should we uh, take uh, outsourcing as a serious uh, potential opportunity for uh, Ethiopia as well as Africa? I keep saying that because I like to think of Africa, you know, as uh, one big continent instead of just focusing on Ethiopia, uh, even though I know a lot of our audience is uh, Ethiopian based today. 
Um, so uh, the first thing, why now? Uh, increased adoption of remote work. Pre-COVID, uh, there was definitely a few companies doing remote work, specifically in tech, uh, but it wasn't, you know, it, it was really like abnormal for somebody to say they work from home or uh, are hiring somebody overseas. It wasn't mainstream. So with COVID, that is something that uh, accelerated uh, remote working, which uh, is one of the reasons that sets us up perfectly to uh, dive deeper into this industry and see what we can do. Um, the, the second thing is uh, cost reduction uh, for anybody that's into economics or finance. I think what we saw the last de decade of low interest rates and all these startups getting millions of dollars in funding because money was so cheap uh, and you know, when the federal government is pretty much printing money at a low rate, uh, you can spend a lot of money, uh, pay developers at Google $200,000, $300,000 and just get away with it. But as we've seen over the past two years, um, these companies are doing a lot of layoffs and starting to tighten up, tighten up their belt uh, because the cost is important. And that's uh, gonna that's gonna be a trend that uh, here at Ambassad we think is gonna continue. Uh, not only for some of these large businesses, but also these uh, small businesses that have to uh, stay competitive. Uh, cost reduction, I think, over the next few years is going to be something they take very seriously. Uh, Sorry to interrupt you, Faisal. Um, okay. Please, if you can do one more minute and also let people know how to get in contact with you, and then right. we'll go through our next few other ones. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Um, so I will go ahead and share this presentation. and. Um, some some of the things that I uh, was going to discuss here. And so uh, in terms of, you know, why Ethiopia, why uh, Africa, uh, the amount of population that we have in Ethiopia uh, is extremely young and affluent with the Western culture uh, and the amount of improving uh, infrastructure that we're seeing in Ethiopia is setting us up perfectly, I think, for an opportunity to, uh, to tackle this, this market. Uh, some key challenges within uh, outsourcing uh, you know, some of the AI stuff, uh, I think, is going to have a lot of impact uh, on some of these jobs that we don't really know yet. Uh, quality control working directly in Ethiopia with Ethiopians for the past two years. Uh, there's definitely a lot of hands-on required than uh, I initially thought. Uh, and then the obvious ones, obviously, the regulatory and bureaucracy hurdles that you see in, in a lot of these African countries, as well as the ongoing uh, political and economic instability that uh, we're seeing. But um, with that said, going into the future, you know, uh, what are some things that uh, we should keep in mind? Uh, the most important thing, I think, is the work that Yes Ethiopia is doing, which is sustainable talent development, providing training opportunities and conferences like this, uh, marketing Ethiopia on a global stage. I think a lot of the perception about Ethiopia as well as Africa is the fact that we're poor, the fact that there is uh, corruption. And I think Africa generally just sucks at marketing ourselves. So how can we uh, change that perception and uh, enhance the business? Uh, opportunities. So I will wrap up here. Uh, my ask for you, if anybody's interested in collaborating, partnering, uh, even, you know, I'm looking into being a, looking for a co-founder. I've been a sole founder as of now, and it's really hard for me to be in two places at once. So if anybody's interested in this topic, I'm more than happy to, to discuss more with you. Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn, Faisal Ramato, or uh, shoot me an email at Faisal at ambassadeit.com. Thank you so much for your time, everybody. Thank you so much, Faisal. Um, okay, so next we have Dr. Ilik al -Fisaha, and then we also have Dr. Hewani and also Dr. Barakat. So let's just try to get everybody in in the next uh, 10 minutes or so. Thank you. Thank you, Sosana. Um, I can go next. My name is Yilakal. I uh, Yilakal, I should say. I'm used to calling myself Yilakal because to the American audience, you know, they don't know how to say Yilakal. Uh, when Dr. Willis was saying Dr. Bayena repeatedly earlier, I was thinking that she was calling me out because people call you with your last name here uh, in America. Uh, anywho, I am based in the New York City metropolitan area. Um, I have studied at Addis Ababa University for my bachelor's and master's and recently completed my PhD at Indiana State University in technology management and human resource development. Um, so I was really inspired by, uh, you know, all the topics that were being raised this morning and everything that was being said, because I feel like I found people who are speaking my language and, you know, that's uh, principally what I work on. 
Um, in terms of professional engagement, I've been in the learning and development talent management sphere for, I want to say, the last 10, 12 years, not to date myself, but that's how long I've been uh, here. Um, and currently, I work for a global nonprofit called the Natural Resources Defense Council, and I am the director of talent management. Now, uh, coming to how I came in contact with uh, Yes Ethiopia, I was first introduced to Fakadu uh, through uh, LinkedIn, and I used to see all the posts that he would, um, you know, put on uh, LinkedIn. And I was really interested in, uh, you know, lending a hand to all um, the contributions that he's doing, all other things that he's uh, carrying out. And um, I have to say, my belief that the future belongs to Africa, the future belongs to us, was reinforced this morning because, as you can see, there's a lot of talent, both in Ethiopia and outside of Ethiopia. And I felt like all of us needed um, a way to come together and to be able to contribute to, uh, you know, the development of our country. Um, as you saw, there are many people who are very accomplished in their own rights, who have done a lot of stuff in this sphere. So um, I am confident that all of us um, would be very glad to contribute our knowledge and our skills and our know-how to the betterment of uh, the Ethiopian youth, uh, so to say. So while prepping uh, this, so, so now I'm not going to put you under time pressure, I'm going to patch up soon. Um, I was looking at some numbers. So what is Africa going to look like in, say, 2050, in about 30 years? So then about one in four of all humans would be living on the African continent. So we'll be 2.5 billion in Africa. And in Ethiopia, currently we're about 120 million and we are going to be 205 million by 2050, 30 years. So there is a good chance that most of us on this call will be able to see that day, you know, if we are lucky. So um, you know how resource tough we are, you know how our youth are not able to get employment opportunities today. So add some 85 million people to the mix and it is going to be a major mess unless we do something about it. So what Fukado is doing and what everybody on here is trying to do is not something you know that we do because we can and stuff, it's because we have to actually do it. Otherwise, we just won't be able to sustain our society, our people the way we need to. Um, in 2050 as well, about 100 million of you know uh, our population is going to be in the working age of between 18 and 49 years. Uh, that is a lot of people. So we need to be looking into how uh, you know we are going to enable our people, our youth, to take their fair share from what is out there. Um, I've looked at some of the presenters working in, uh, you know, their capacities to uh, encourage remote work, to encourage upskilling and so forth. I think all of those uh, should be things that we need to think about. But I want to leave with uh, three challenges to three different groups of people, I have to say. So for each and every one of you on this call, whether you are a young person in Ethiopia or you are a professional in Ethiopia or over here are uh, working on this. I think working on upskilling everybody's capacity to do the work would be primary. You know, it could be something as easy as ensuring that people have the necessary communication skills, the necessary language skills, the basic digital literacy skills to get the job done is super important. Um, I have also, like, for example, Faisal's uh, presentation uh, talked about uh, the future of BPOs in Africa. And I think that's also an important area to explore. Um, I am talking to a couple of people, actually, uh, in connection to my PhD project on how to really work on establishing BPOs in Africa. Because as Faisal was saying, uh, India and the Philippines are the major players right now. And also, how can we actually use our power to enforce government policy and ask for resources for this to be encouraged in Ethiopia from uh, a tax perspective, from resource availing perspective, from infrastructure perspective, because the internet is also important. So these are all um, things that I'd be interested to work with partners on uh, to help us Ethiopia on. Uh, because I really believe in uh, our youth, they're our future, and I see a lot of capacity even in this room to actually uh, make some moves and make things happen. So, definitely, I'll send it back to you, Sosna. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Nidigan.
Okay, next, uh, Dr. Hewana, if you're with us, if you can take a couple of minutes to introduce yourself and your work, and then next we'll go to Dr. Barakat. Uh, uh, thank you, Sosana. Uh, I apologize, I'm driving, so my camera is off, but I want to thank Fakadu. Uh, I've known uh, Fakadu and I refer to each other as brother and sisters. Um, I want to thank him for uh, just moving this this far. I bring uh, this uh, conversation to the other side. I'm an early childhood education. Um, Fakadu and I met after he posted a picture of an orphan in an uh, orphanage in Awasa. And that conversation has translated into us now working with that orphanage. What we basically do is really look at the holistic and comprehensive approach of early childhood education in Ethiopia. Similar to the youth unemployment, we have more than almost 60% of age eligible preschool children that do not have access to school. And I truly believe that also translates in how our, our outcome as a youth uh, sometimes is disenfranchised. Sometimes they don't have access to quality education. So our approach is if we catch them early and give them the highest level and the highest care and the highest guidance at birth, two, three, four, five years old, then when they become youth, when they become 12, 13 or 14, besides you know going to school, they can also become better citizen, kinder citizen. We, we can produce more people like Fakadu in Ethiopia, which we need, a kinder, gentler, caring individuals. Uh, currently, we have a project in Debra Tabor. We're building the first community preschool that will serve 450 people. And a testament to Fakadu, our civil engineer came from Yes, Ethiopia, a wonderful individual by the name of Muluk Anbeza who is working with us. Uh, Muluk and also uh, uh, gives us a lot of advice. Uh, he's a, a great person to talk to and just to bounce ideas. Our other project is in Bahardar, where we created an outdoor play. Uh, we've also talked about volunteers doing a lot of work with early childhood education in Ethiopia, because when we're looking at rural, and I think the past Yisik uh, Ilik Al and Faisal talked about this too, we have to shift the focus from cities to rural because that's where the work need is. That's where the youth, the highest unemployment of youth are. Um, and then I also want to challenge everyone here and especially those of us that live outside to invest in the intellect of the youth in Ethiopia. We don't. We as Africans also have a very deficit perspective of our own people. We always think as someone that doesn't look like us has better knowledge. But the truth is our indigenous knowledge, our cultural practices, our traditions, they give us so much um, surviving in Ethiopia right now. Just living in Ethiopia is a huge asset. So we have to be able to what the Fakadu does is look at the person for what they bring, not what we want to see, but for what they bring and utilize it in our in our work, okay? Um, and then finally with Awasa, one thing that I wanna share because of Fakadu, we are working with Rohobot, the orphanage that he actually has been supporting uh, for many years now. Um, one touching story I would just wanna share because it just shows how big his heart is. That group of children never went outside. And I remember, I think two years ago, Fakadu, correct me if I'm wrong, we took them out for the first time. Right. We took them to Awasa University where the children for the first time touched grass because most of these children are found on the, uh, well, they're abandoned. They're found on the street. And I'm talking about newborns a few days. And, um, and that, you know, that relationship and that, and it's just not one orphanage, it's many orphanages that he's involved in. And so that is what we do. Uh, you can check the website. I didn't have anything, but it's early child, early education, Ethiopia.org. Uh, uh, Fakadu has presented on many of our conferences and will continue to present. Uh, and I just really, really celebrate you, Fakadu. I, I really celebrate what you do. Because like you said, one person is a nation. When you impact one youth, 
you're impacting their family, their neighbor, their community, and you're showing them what it means to be kind and giving to another. So uh, I thank you. I hope so, Sana, I've kept my time. Yes, that's perfect. Thank you, Dr. Hewani. And especially for mentioning uh, the volunteer work that we do and the connection that we have with Rehoboth and other orphanages. Next, I'll give it to Dr. Barakat. Thank you for your patience. Thank you. I am. Um... I am beyond words to, to to describe how how I'm feeling about you know how the people you you put together for Adu to be on a, on this panel and also throughout the day today. It's it's a great example of you know bringing people together, uh, who, who like-minded people like Faisal said, and I I am honored to be here. My name is Barakat Kindo. I. I, I grew up in, 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 in Owasa, Ethiopia. Fukadu and I met, I don't know if you remember this. <laughs> don't know if you remember this, but uh, Gitao Nersino is a, 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 a friend of ours, a common friend of ours. And he went to school with you at Hawasa University. And I, and I grew up in Owasa. And Gitao and I went, when you are first born, uh, when it was I mean, when, when your girl was born, and, and that little house that you had next to the lake, I don't know if you remember that. <laughs> so we, I went to see you there, and that's the first time I met you. And uh, our relationship has grown. I've followed you since then, and your your graduate school programs, and going to Europe and back to Ethiopia. The books that you put together, that the books you brought from Europe with you to Ethiopia. Uh, I mean, it, it really shows your, from early age, this was uh, probably um, right after you graduating from college is when when this started. And it's a long, it seems like, a may, may seem like a short journey for us, but for him, I think he knew this is the path uh, long before a, a lot of us found out. So uh personally i am happy to have known you knew known to have known all of you here and in, in this panel um i'm involved in a few projects in ethiopia uh with with uh, with our family in awasa uh there's a, a primary and a middle school that uh, also early childhood uh, center that we our family runs in ethiopia and uh, uh and also i've been <coughs> I've been involved with uh, YES uh, once in a while with teaching of some courses. My background is in statistics and data analytics, and uh, and uh, we've we've given a training for grad students and also early career people in Ethiopia on on data analysis uh, topics uh, about you know a, a few six weeks of projects. And uh, uh, look forward to continuing more of our collaboration. And I've, today I've heard from and I've known people uh, that you know it's a dream come true to be together in this and this and uh, with these people. So appreciate it. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Dr. Barakat. Um, so everyone, if you have any questions, please either raise your hand or put them in the chat. We'll try to address questions in the next five minutes or so, and then we'll continue to the closing portion of our program. I wish if Alazar is in the room, like he was uh, working with Dr. Mary Willis, and he's one of my best students from Awasa, a colleague, also really an amazing uh, athlete, is a role model for the young people. He does uh, push-ups like he can carry me around. And Barakat, are you on? Um, no. Alazar, if you are in the room, I just would like to see you. And if you can say a few words about your work with Dr. Mary Willis. Are you there, Alazar? Maybe he's not. I think he was here earlier, but might have yeah. been. Okay. Okay, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. thanks so much, everybody. So just want to hear what the other people. I don't want to speak a lot. <laughs> Thank you, Fike. I think we have a question from Inner Circle Venture. If you want to unmute yourself and go ahead and ask. Uh, 
Hi, Dr. Nadu. Thank you. Uh, I already asked my question to Dr. Nadu on the chat box, and I've got already my answer. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else have questions? Okay, I think I see it's Agga. Do you want to go ahead? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Sosuna, for the chance. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. Yeah, um, thank you very much for the nice presentation and also for the experience sharing for all presenters or uh, panelists. And also thank you for Yes Ethiopia for organizing really amazing uh, conference. I have uh, two questions for two of the panelists. Uh, one is to Dr. Hawani. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think uh, I hear about your work and also your uh, commitment, ambition, uh, especially to work on the child education. And I hear this when I was in Ethiopia. I was uh, a director of uh, university industry linkage and technology transfer directorate. And I think you uh, you were planning to work in, because now is Kotebe Metropolitan University is called uh, Kotebe Education, I think. Dr. Negga and Dr. Bereket also, they mentioned that they are, uh, I think, collaborating. And I'm not sure, but uh, the name is now changed. Uh, the name is changed after I left, actually. Uh, but, uh, as I have heard, uh, mainly the, the Kotebe Education University is called, and they are mainly working in ex excelling in education, I think. So my, my, my question is to Dr. Hawani, uh, because um, the proposal that I saw when I was there was to really collaborate in uh, child education and maybe working research area in that regard and how far does it go? I mean, it's not like a specific to the, to the university, but in general, uh, in uh, Ethiopia's universities and your work, you, the collaboration, just to know um, that. That's one question. And the other question is to Dr. Barakat. Um, I know uh, I saw um, like education statistics, education, I'm also a statistician, by the way. Um, and uh, statistics education, uh, when I think about statistics education, it's, it really starts in the university. So I saw that you were trying to do in, uh, uh, I think, embedding or like, uh, starting from maybe elementary, like uh, statistics education in elementary, and maybe also like if you can explain of a little bit in in that area because um, we are discussing about uh, the use and I think our staff has to be also uh, children uh, and so the child education is uh, really very important. Uh, Sorry, so got, work on. Yeah, could you, thank you very much. Just, yeah, could you clarify your questions just like in a very short way? Could you just summarize both questions? One for Dr. Hewani and one for Dr. Barakat. Just like just a short, brief uh, version of the, the question you have. Okay. Uh, so to Dr. Hewan is uh, like maybe the child uh, education, but uh, in connection with universities. So, okay. and, so, and that's my question. Mm -hmm. To Dr. Burkett is uh, also a uh, child education, but spe specifically uh, based on his field, which is statistics. Awesome, thank you. You can go ahead, Dr. Hewani. Thank you for the question. Uh, yes, Ahon, um, sorry. They changed to Kotebe Education University, and correct me if I'm wrong. The focus now solely is in teacher preparation and education, uh, correct? So we are actually uh, rolling out uh, a teacher training 
Uh, and uh, back to Rohobot and Bahardar, uh, we've been doing teacher training, a parent training for the past two years uh, on a monthly basis, off and on. Uh, as you know, there will, has been internet in uh, Amara region since August, so that has disrupted our training uh, focus. Uh, but we shifted to, uh, what's it, uh, Rohobot. So using that to answer your questions, our MOUs or our partnerships are mainly with universities because of the question you raised. If we don't educate teachers and uh, as someone said, close the skills gap, the knowledge and skills gap, then we're not reaching children. Specifically with Kota Bay Education University, we did start a conversation on how and uh, ways I think sometimes the challenge is, um, and this is something that we have to openly discuss because that's the only way we're gonna make things better, right? So sometimes when when we sign MOUs, and this can be um, a gap from us too, because you, you, know, you come to the US or the West and you have all these information kind of filtering down and you think, oh, this is good. I don't necessarily think that's okay i think we have to look at it from the problem standpoint and so what we propose sometimes and what was what is needed doesn't match so we had to scale back we have to step back and say wait a minute if, if, is what we're putting on the mou with the understanding and with with the approach does it really meet the university and the children that it touches right our focus is always about children and then the teachers and then the parents and then the community so that's where we're at but we are moving forward we have some big uh things coming uh forward i think i spoke to fagadu too with the uh, uh, education <laughs> recently and so that's where we're at i hope that answers your question thank you dr Hawani, and then dr barakat and then we'll go to one more question and try to answer some from the chat but i know we're past time so yeah thank you so I got, thank you for the question uh, we went to the same school in Ethiopia in high school so mm -hmm. but we, we know each other for a long time um, so the, the, we've had a, 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 a about two two years ago we've had an initiative with a friend of mine uh, dr Timiskin, uh about you know how could we like like how could we use our knowledge to educate uh, folks in Ethiopia. And also at the same time, what we were focused was on uh, an aspect of mathematical literacy. And for me, statistical or data, data literacy. Uh, today, I, I, I was simple things like, you know, in our presentations today, we have seen some numbers being discussed. Okay. Mm -hmm. How, you know, the education, learning about storing data using data making informed decision uh, not really and uh, not really thinking about you know a rigorous statistical curriculum but rather how how can our high school and even middle school uh, students can learn to rely on facts on data to to go about their their days and that's that was uh something we, we started with you know we we, we had a, a few um video lessons and conversations with uh, with people in ethiopia on 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 that aspect introducing statistics at an early age and that's you know something that you know uh, I, I the area that i work in so that is um uh that is uh, something that that i worked on and we're trying to like at a personal level as an extracurricular sort of activity uh, we are introducing these things to uh, students in uh, in, in, high, in Awasa uh, where I work with a with a school there um, but you know it's it's not widely something that's widely implemented it's to, to a very to a very school to very few schools in, in Awasa but thanks for mentioning that <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Barakat. Uh, let's take a question from Temeskin, who has had his hand up for a while. And then I have one other closing question, and then I think we can give it back to uh, Fiki. Go ahead, Temeskin. Can you hear me, please? Yes. 
Oh, I thank you very much, uh, uh, all of you, uh, especially uh, Mr. Fukaru. Uh, that was, uh, uh, I really appreciate uh, Mr. Fukaru, what uh, you really and uh, what you're doing in this far. Uh, I have uh, one question. Uh, of uh, difference, uh, what we call it, uh, job uh, opportunity, I get, I get it, and uh, I have uh, different work experience. And uh, so, for how can I contribute for you uh, for yes, Ethiopia? Specifically, this uh, question may uh, before uh, Mr. Fukado. And uh, how to integrate the technology with uh, education? I think it's a, a holistic type of question. Uh, I'm a health professional nowadays. I'm working as an uh, institution, uh, clinical institution, as well as the teaching institution. Uh, so I try to integrate the technology, even if for that reason, I'm trying to study the web development program. Nowadays, I'm studying uh, to integrate the technology with the, uh, specifically for learning teaching purpose. So uh, I have suffered some problems, I've got some problems to integrate. Why? Because even if the growing uh, knowledge and understanding are observed nowadays in our country, Ethiopia, but there are a lot of, uh, what we call it, uh, sorts of problems. So how can I, and how can we integrate the technology, uh, including the learning teaching process, even if the health care, since I'm a health professional, uh, I try to integrate this technology with health care uh, services. So any tip that you uh, may add or you may, Give me an, as information regarding on this, and uh, as I mentioned, the first, uh, how can I contribute for ECTP? Uh, in fact, I have uh, okay. around almost Sorry near to. Sorry, to cut you off, uh, screen. <laughs> uh, Let's keep it short. So, two questions, right? So, uh, how yeah. can you contribute to ECTP as well as how can you use technology in education? Is that correct? Yeah. Okay, oh. great. Yeah, that's Thank what I'm you. going. Go ahead, okay. Thank you very much. Uh, so I can answer later, like together, if Thomas Ken, you are not in a hurry, let the panel list this kind of, a, then I have a kind of a way forward session. So I would like to come later than interrupting the panel discussion. Let people exhaust the questions to the panelists. I will answer later, OK? Thank you. If you are not in a hurry, Thomas Ken, do you like? Would you stay or do I need to answer first? Uh, yeah, I can stay. Please stay because we'll discuss more. How to yeah, contribute yeah. to Ethiopia is a kind of a session by itself. So I would like okay. to wait until the panelists are kind of. I see Dr. Mary Willis is still here. I have kind of like more uh, even questions like to. This also goes with the missions of Ethiopia. This is for Dr. Mary Willis. You have been bringing students to Africa, and one of the aims of Yes Ethiopia is to give opportunities for the young people in the diaspora, like Sosena, and those who grew up here, born here, maybe didn't have much engagement with. So, what do you recommend us? What should we do based on your experiences? Uh, if we bring, let's say, students from US to Ethiopia, just give us a little bit uh, tips uh, of like to make that learning really a very good success. I know it's not easy, so. Shike, are you, are you asking me to say something? Yeah, I okay. mean, like, because, mm -hmm. yeah, we're still in the panel, right? Uh, mm -hmm. so, yeah. We didn't finish, yeah. That's okay. why I wanted to ask you, uh, just to give us, because mm -hmm. it helps ESC to appear on yes. what they're going to do. Okay. Um, let me say two things. Um, it's often the case that um, other countries come into um, Africa to uh, study and learn and don't give something back. And so when, when Dr. Uh, Shamelis Bayana and I designed this program, our goal was to have our students learn from the US, but to make sure we gave something to the community. So one thing we did was, you know, go into the primary schools and we interview children, we weigh and measure them. 
but we noticed that children had um, no um, real education about dental health care. Many of them had extensive decay and no way to fix it. And so when we work now in any country, be it Ethiopia or Zambia, we uh, make sure to hire uh, local, um, uh, local students uh, uh, from a university to help us with our work. That's how I met uh, Fike. That's how I met uh, Alisar. We hired them. Uh, uh, I don't mean hired in the sense of a formal job, but we, we don't want to take time and expertise from people without compensating. So that's really important. And stu Fick, I went to Fike, he was the department head at the time, and asked him if he could help uh, find students. Alizar just ha happened to be a student at the time. He was a very, very hard worker. He was very patient with us. And so he was hired year after year. Uh, and as I said, now he's my co-leader and he will be in other countries, but also Ethiopia when we can come back. And the other important thing is the, is the dental care. There's so many kinds of things that you can do um, that are extremely helpful to a community um, and uh, leaves them better than you found them. And the dental project is one. And we, we are, um, as I said, interested in learning about growth and food security. And so this is what our students are interested in learning. So we partner with uh, local dental clinics. Um, we, we provide students with dental hygiene materials. We talk with them about, and, and by the way, not, not toothbrush and toothpaste, which is too expensive for them, but we, we talk about using dental sticks because they are effective in keeping your teeth clean um, and bacteria free. So we provide them with uh, dental, dental cleaning tools and we talk to them about hygiene. And if they have a, a bad decay um, or if they have a tooth that's, that could be filled, we take them to a dental clinic. That, that it gives us, again, it's a huge learning thing for us, but it helps the community. So what I would encourage you to do as you design projects, as you um, find uh, things that benefit you, find a way to benefit the community. Our coffee project, and we will get it done someday, <laughs> Our coffee project is about um, learning. It's very exciting. Everybody likes to, everybody loves coffee, <laughs> but uh, we want farmers, coffee farmers to have something. They're cut out of the process. And so again, that's something we learn on the ground. We can see a need and we can add something. And often it doesn't have to be a big expensive project. I guess that's what I want to encourage you to think about. Thank you so okay? much. All right. Thanks so much. Um, Thank you. I think we have yeah, if the other panelists want to also answer this question, like how do you see uh, future uh, collaborations globally between Yesitopa youth uh, and just the, the world overall, uh, please go ahead and unmute yourself and uh, contribute. I think we still have Jonas Hagos as well here, or actually, no, he left. <laughs> Okay, but yeah, anybody else who wants to contribute to this question, please go ahead. I, yeah, I might ask. start. I might start the way for our discussion. Yeah, let's do that. Um, if there are no other questions, I would start by answering the question which Thomas can ask me. Uh, I think I had the last slide on my PowerPoint. Let me go and show you like the plans for 2024 because it gives you an idea about where we can work together and where you we need your expertise and uh, yes let me share my screen yeah yeah as you look at this screen like this clearly shows our 
uh, plans, what we were planning to do. Now, not that this is more focusing on the uh, yes, Ethiopia and the United States, but still, uh, this was started to support uh, yes, Ethiopia, the mother organization. Okay, not this are, oh, you cannot see? You just see a dot. Can you see? No. Oh, sorry. Let me share again. I don't know why when I make it big screen, you know, it disappears. Okay, I could see it. So you could see it. Okay, I could. Oh, mm -hmm. thank you. Can you see the screen now? No. Can you see it? Yes. Yeah, this is our plan for 2024. Um, so thanks to the board members. Thank you, especially Mr. Seifu, you know, we managed to get the legal status. Now we still pay the full non-profit in US, as Dr. Verkat and the others also added. So now we are launching operations in the United States. For those of you in US, in Europe, outside Ethiopia, just ask yourself, do you have 40 minutes, just half an hour per week? Maybe this is a time when you're drinking coffee or just time after work or while you are traveling. Because that 40 minutes engagement with us, we have seen it changes a lot of things towards a better end. So we need representatives in different parts of the United States. There are students coming from Ethiopia. I remember when I first came here, if it were not because of support of Dr. Mary Willis, Dr. Natalie Hahn, Dr. Shimalis, the owner of Ethiopia restaurant here, if I didn't have that relationship, Trust me, we're in a very bad situation. Because when I leave Ethiopia, I had only $200 in my pocket. 100 was finished before I leave New York. You know, 100, just like almost empty pocket in the United States. This is not, you can't survive like this. So people helped me. I know the hassle of this problem. What, what, what if they don't, have, they don't know anyone? Right? Picking them from airport, just giving them a temporary shelter. It's a lot of work for, for our young people coming to the United States. That's the first mission we have. So we need people in different parts of the US, especially where there are big universities. We need more volunteers. People who open their doors, bring our students, pick them from airport, find them a better accommodation. You know, even calling back home was a very big challenge because my phone was not suitable with the US SIM card, right? There are a lot of things that you could help with as the first thing. So we need to assign focal persons in major states of the United States and start partnership with organizations. So now we have a structure, we have board members, we have a bank account, we have activities, and we start from one person, as we said earlier, one person for us is the country. You could tell me a lot of problems about Ethiopia. My question is, just give me one young person. Let me start from that. And we have seen a lot of nice stories happen. Just me and Dr. Uh, Mary Willis, Dr. Uh, Hewani, you know, all these brothers and sisters who presented. We knew each other from these small, small activities. And my engagement with, you know, with Dr. Mary Willis ended up creating a PhD study opportunity for me. And then, it led to the start of his Ethiopia. And Dr. Barakat, whom I know before, then we met here. Uh, he was in Chicago with his family, I remember. Now he's a board member, he's a chair of our board member. That's how you build relationships, you know? So please work with us. And we need to start partnerships with organizations. Faisal and me, now we already started working together. Tomorrow his team would help with all the media recording for the session in Addis Ababa. Right? How do I know Faison? Just through LinkedIn, searching people in Omaha, Ethiopians, and his name come up. You see? That's how you could change a small engagement from the social media into something big. And he is really, really very brilliant person. I already see how much he's helping the Ethiopians. So we can start partnerships. You might have an idea. Maybe you don't have an organization. Bring it together. Just come to us, come to Ethiopia. We will add value and then you'll see how ideas grow. Dr. Meli Wiris, I've seen, I was telling her like, then 
yes still pays for sure born <laughs> in her house so so fundraising you support we know in Ethiopia our strategy is that what would you do if anyone is not willing to sponsor or give you money for your ideas that's a question I ask to a lot of my students the young people you have an idea but no one is willing to help you don't have funding but how do you start someone asked her today I would like to answer now my friend you can start a business without any capital I can boldly tell you is easy to pay business or not right did we have the pocket money when we start no you can start what if you go and mentor high school students now we have 96 percent students grade 12 didn't pass to university right that's where you could go and start mentoring home to home tutoring by self is a business if you think business of like uh buildings and the like i know that's not possible but you could start selling your knowledge right what can you sell your knowledge it channel one day someone asked can i start a business without economy yes you can because you have an idea you are educated just be humble and kind enough and then be clear about what you can do and what you cannot do i would say if you are a university graduate i'm very sure you can tutor a student of grade five i have a daughter she's grade seven trust me if i find a very good person to mentor her i'm very happy to pay and i know there are a lot of families working families who need someone to mentor their children so just think creatively then there are opportunities my friends so fundraising we need it to sponsor to business ideas now i know he would favor from Addis Ababa, like they just have ideas they just started their business maybe 100 dollars can kick them start for five of, of us here if we just put together 20 dollars per month we can start one business per six months and one business means elder technology Ashenafi. after Ashenafi, we have 15 students it didn't take us more than three years now that's how we should change ethiopia unless if we just think of like millions of uh birth to start a business that doesn't happen and we expect from the government to do something you know <laughs> i don't want to go to that line so okay, if i can quickly add can our yeah, um, panelists please, uh, yeah can our panelists please put their linkedin in the chat someone had actually asked and i think that yeah. would be really helpful if we could include uh panelists linkedin uh on the chat thank you thank you so our other plan is exchange tours to africa just like what Dr. Mary will say, we don't want you to go to Ethiopia just as a visitor, but go with a development mindset. As she said, make sure you make things are better after you leave, okay? And make connections. This is one of our plans. Remote jobs and online courses. Dr. Negga just showed that's why we want to have another meeting with Dr. Negga. We have a lot of resources. Trust me, Ethiopians, Africans, even here in US, that's a lot of opportunity, but we just need to be wiser and then calm and intentional in our engagements. Today, I was like on Facebook, on TikTok, on Telegram. I was doing a research while I'm sitting here. No, also, no one was listening on TikTok. So let's know, sometimes I just don't understand it. Why this discussion is not interesting on TikTok? Can you think of like how the minds of our children and our youth have been hijacked into something that's yeah I, I I don't know I can't explain it and then we want to support Ethiopian universities you are a PhD student how can you work with me for example in Addis Ababa I know we have a lot of PhD students no one reached out to me even if I've been asking and begging a lot please help in coordinating this conference no I, I didn't see any phd student from Addis. finished this tells a story how pro proactive are we just to reach reach out and ask each other how can i help what can we do together okay can i help in sending invitations maybe can i help in promoting on social media i'm asking i'm literally begging the Ethiopian scholars to work with me there are a lot of nice stories, but not to the level we expect. So work with us, work on social media, share our videos, 
even create your own video. Grade nine and grade 12, physics, maths, we don't have videos. Everybody's doing video, but we don't see. Now 96% of our students are not passing. And who's tutoring the students? Can You can do it online, work with this Ethiopia. Let's say if we start a physics tutor group, people who answer, who reads questions, and then, you know, like declassify this grade 12 exam. Why 96% students fail? What is this question? Can we make sure maybe the three years, four years from today, students don't fail? We can work together. Start a business idea there. Trust me, I'll support. You see, that's how you could work with me. Be practical. Where can you start small? Someone asked, like, how can we use technology for teaching? My brother, Thomas Gerd, which class, which teaching are you asking about? Is it like primary school? Is it secondary school? Is it a university? How many Ethiopian university instructors have a YouTube page? I know that before Ethiopia, I didn't. I thought I, it needs to be paid to have a YouTube, but no. You can start a YouTube by your own. Can I start a YouTube with my just phone? I didn't know that. I thought it's a website that you have to pay for it. You see, a lot of us, we have a knowledge, but our knowledge was not intentionally and wisely connected to the internet. So that's how we could connect technology and education. And as this Ethiopia now, we can work together uh, if you are really happy and ready to do that. So we want to award the business ideas tomorrow in Addis Ababa. There are business idea presentations. So the next of uh, Shenafi and LDF technology is coming tomorrow. Just donate to Ethiopia and come with ideas and with experiences. We are happy to work with you. Especially we give priority to young people far from Addis Ababa. We know a lot of party, a lot of things are ongoing in Addis. 70% of Ethiopian opportunities are in Addis Ababa. I can see the danger and the damage being done to this country. 70% of Ethiopia is not in Addis Ababa. No, that is injustice to the nation. There are a lot of young people out of Addis. Everybody should not migrate to Addis Ababa. We need to work by awarding people. Just start one. Can we award a business idea in Asosa? Can you award someone in Makale? Someone in Jijiga? Should everybody come to Addis Ababa? No. We can start it as is Ethiopia. I'm not discussing theory. Tomorrow, there is a business idea presentation. There is already a guy from Makale, Lilo Creatives. They already have a business. What if we support them? Tomorrow, they are employers. They already started employing. These are the ideas you could work with us, right? And then development partnerships, big projects are there. I know there is a project in South Western Ethiopia, like a very big project. Just ask, where would you like to work among all these areas that I did share here? This is the kind of like, you don't need to answer just now. These are one of the ways we can work together. And uh, it's not very specific to exhaust this discussion. A way forward, we have week weekly meetings on LinkedIn. Every week on Saturday, we already had meeting for 58 different weeks. Session 59 will be tomorrow. Come join those meetings. Then we can discuss further. We cannot finish everything today. As you see, everybody is speaking only seven minutes, seven minutes. Still, it was not enough. You see, we have the technology. Why we meet every, it's an annual meeting. What if we meet every three months? It's like we can do. I'm very happy to serve. And then the more people serving, even it minimizes weight on us. Like we can we can really share the burden. So in short, this is what we have from Yes Ethiopia as a way forward. And again, don't forget, start from one and so hagar no. Benny, Ethiopia Satuling, and the what that be One person is a country. Start from the smallest, trust me, it can grow. And that's how Ethiopia came to this stage. And thanks to all of you, I'm really very grateful. And uh, so, as I said, the discussion is not finished. Tomorrow there is a conference in Addis Ababa. It's in 
Magdolia Hotel, Magdolia Hotel, and it uh, starts at one o'clock in the afternoon. I know because of the African Union meeting, all the roads are closed. That's why we move the, the meeting time to lunchtime. Magnolia Hotel, please go, encourage Ashenafi, encourage the young people in Addis Ababa. They really, they really worked a lot. They sent hundreds of emails and uh, letters, and they didn't get any sponsorship support. It's a kind of frustration, but I want the young people to see, even if people reject you, keep going, make sure what you are doing is not harming others. But don't stop. We know in Ethiopia, we are very good sometimes in watering the tree, but we don't water the seedlings. So I am. So don't stop the friends in Addis Ababa. And uh, yeah, if you allow me to speak, I'll speak 24 hours, non stop about this agenda. So I'll stop here. And don't forget to join every Saturday afternoon, 6 p.m. on LinkedIn. That's a weekly session. And uh, we also join also our Telegram group and, of course, TikTok. <laughs> and uh, yeah, thanks so much. And I'm happy to answer questions about the uh, way forwards. And yeah, thank you, Sosi. And uh, the room is open for discussion. I speak a lot because it's a subject I care about. And I'll keep discussing, and I don't want to make it boring. I think, Fike, if you could also mention our 2024 plan, that would be great while people think of questions. Uh, yes. Uh, did I actually mention most of these things in my presentation? No, it's like more or less I did touch on the what we want to achieve really in 2024. So above all now, especially those of you in the diaspora, uh, I have heard the student who got scholarship in Italy and she got a visa. She didn't travel only because of flight ticket. Seifu helped one student, I know it's about 1,000. Seifu paid for him. But how often should we ask Seifu? We know. It looked like Ethiopians, do, you might say, ah, where is the money coming from? We have seen Ethiopians fundraise 1 million per night here in the United States. 1 million USD in single night, which means we have economy. We just need to know. We just need to be uh, kind of persistent. It doesn't happen per night. And please donate to Yes Ethiopia. There is also like a... Uh, <laughs> I, I, I feel bad when I ask for economy, because it's not the first thing we ask. As I said, we first want to ask for your time and for your connections. Economy would come later. Money should not be really the, like the cover of the story. That's not what we're asking for. We're asking for your connections and your engagement with us, but we still would like to have some donations if you can do that. And um, yeah. Let me hear if there is any question from the audience, unless I can go a little bit more and give you some uh, breakdown of the activities. If I can just add, uh, okay, if you allow me, Sosanna, um, to what you just mentioned. Yes, uh, the re yeah, the reason we have this nonprofit organization is so that we all can contribute towards the same objective. And that objective is to help our youth in Ethiopia become self-sufficient, more productive, and uh, the next generation will be better off because of that donation that we give. That's the main reason we established this nonprofit organization. So if you have the opportunity and the means to support our, uh, our uh, organization, please do so. A monthly contribution of $10, $25, $50 goes so far out, you know, so much, it, it will go further. So I encourage those who live here in the United States or Canada or anywhere else to log on to our uh, website, you know, check in and uh, click the donate button and then uh, make your donations. Thanks so much. Thank you, Seifu. 
Uh, yes, definitely. We would really love support with your time as well as donations to make possible exactly what we're doing here. Um, and yeah, if there are any other questions, otherwise I think Fikay could also just elaborate more on who we are, but otherwise, please uh, let us know of any remaining questions. Yeah, the discussions will continue. Kind of the official se session is almost ending, but this uh, link would be open for the coming four or five hours. And I'm not signing off. <laughs> And if you are someone who is not in a hurry, if you want to ask questions, if you want to engage with us, I'm very happy to uh, answer. Uh, for example, I see Shalom is in the room. Uh, she's one of our ambassadors from Wallo University from Desi. Now she's in Italy. And, uh, you know, I would like to hear and reconnect with our young uh, scholars. So, uh, but before before we go to like uh, our kind of within house discussion i want to ask especially our guest speakers the panelists uh you know i asked the jonas if he can join us in i think jonas i don't see him so anyone who would like to contribute to this discussion please especially the guest speakers uh take the opportunity and uh, feel free to kind of give, give us uh kind of a closing remark or something you'd like to add uh, especially the panelists because we are stopping you you know we are running to uh, finish the session as scheduled uh, we know you come from your commitments and the like we understand your time pressure but please take one or two minutes and then add whatever you'd like to add especially the panel discussion participants and then also others can speak now kind of the floor is open for further discussions and we can also change our hike <laughs> i know for some of us some of us this is also a kind of a challenge we have an idea and we are not confident enough i can fully understand i'm one of you guys okay uh, when it comes to the language, we understand English and barrier and donor. But I'm the names of each of the panelists and we want to say thank you to all of them and uh, can continue. Yes, uh, thank you, Fike. So, yes, we also want to thank everybody, uh, including Dr. Barakat and Tizita for being our main MCs today. Uh, we also want to thank all of our panelists, including uh, Jonas Hagus, uh, Dr. Yilik Al, uh, Jonas Samuel, um, and then also we want to thank Dr. Um, Barbara Stoker. We also want to thank uh, Dr. Yulso Abbaba, and then Brianne Wolf, as well as Professor Mark Balshweed, and Dr. Nagga from Ohio State, as well as Engineer Sileshi from the UK. And we also want to thank Dr. Mary Willis, again, Dr. Yilik Al, Mr. Jonas Hagos, uh, Seifu, as well as uh, Dr. Hewani and uh, Ashan Nafi. Uh, if I missed anyone, please let me know, okay? Uh, but thank you all for your contribution and your time. It is very um, just priceless uh, that you guys are giving your time, especially for the youth and for our organization. And we hope to continue working with you in the future as well. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, thanks so much, Sosna. I also like to really uh, kind of appreciate the support I'm being given by Sosna, Zita, Tesfahun, Dr. Oraket, and uh, Seifu, uh, also um, uh, Matthias from uh, Lincoln, Nebraska. He was born here, and his mom is teaching in the uh, University of Nebraska. 
you know, there are a lot of really uh, very nice people that we can uh, work with. And Dr. Mary Willis, you are the reason for all this. And I can't thank you enough. Thank you for doing what you do and for, you know, promoting Ethiopia and uh, for being a very good friend with Dr. Shimelis and uh, for supporting the Ethiopian restaurant in Nebraska. Well, we call it the Ethiopian Embassy in Nebraska. So, and uh, I know them. I know yes for sure. She is a very big, a very big Ethiopia. I don't know how to say it. Like she's the best cook. And uh, uh, when I eat there, I feel like I've been to one of my uh, relatives' home. So, like we're really in a very thanks to God, thanks to all of you. And uh, uh, so, Sidna, you're an amazing. Uh, you know, future leader, uh, witnessing this kind of emerging leaders, it keeps me moving. Like, I don't feel tired. And uh, these are really kind, genuine uh, Ethiopians who would like to contribute to the country. And uh, I know we have a lot of them, it's not only Sosuna. Because of this uh, Ethiopia, I came to know now my brothers and sisters are not only those that my mom uh, <laughs> was. You know, I was my, my mom gave birth to, but I have a lot of brothers and sisters. Dr. Ewani, what you are doing in Debra Tabor, the support being provided to robot orphanage, is, is means a lot. That's beyond words. Children's run away. It's, it's just, I can't think of like, we never thought about where are the moms, you know? Until now, we only support the children. What if? What if we start looking for the mothers? You know, it's another story. And uh, so, thanks so much, Dr. Ewani. And I cannot thank enough all of you. So, in general, uh, as I said, the discussion started only today. It's just the beginning. Every week we are meeting. I would say, especially for most professionals, come to LinkedIn every Saturday, 6 p.m. It's 9 a.m. here in Nebraska, 6 p.m. in Ethiopia. If you miss one, come to the other. It's every week ongoing, and it's our weekly conference. Okay, it's, we don't have annual conference. We just call it annual conference. Our conference is every week. Our work is every day. Whenever I'm on social media, I go with intention. Is that's one of the feedback I give to young Ethiopians? When you log into the internet, ask yourself, what are you looking for? Which keyword are you writing on LinkedIn or whatever? Or you just end up being you know, like listening to stories that might disappoint you, demotivate you, and go, go back unhappy. Yeah, please, that's not the way to go. So we're very happy to work with you. And uh, as I said, the floor is open. I don't close this room. Those of you who have any urgent commitments, you are excused to kind of leave, but uh, we'll stay and um, maybe we'll take about 10 or 15 minutes break. If there is no any question, and then I'll be back. And which okay, means I think we're... we have one question from oh, Venture, and then let's take a break. Sure, wow. thank you. Where is the question in the chat box? No, they raised their hand. So, okay, please. Venture, if you want to go ahead and unmute yourself. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, uh, it's just uh, my final uh, note actually because I am uh, leaving now. Uh, mm -hmm. I just want to give a couple of suggestions. Uh, one is uh, Mr. Fikado, uh, parallel with the conference, on the weekly conference, uh, why don't you uh, prepare uh, selected topics, uh, specifically not teaching the hard skill and knowledge, uh, but about self-concept, uh, self-image motives and different behavioral traits. Maybe you can uh, select some experts uh, from the audience on a weekly basis, if there is uh, a 30 minute or one hour training session, that will help a lot. Uh, and that is what we need actually as a country. Maybe you can do some uh, research. Uh, what is the gap? Uh, what is uh, required in the marketplace? Is it problem solving? Is it communication? Is it conflict management? You know, the list goes on. Uh, that is one of the suggestions. Then the, the second suggestion that I have is you need to do a lot of marketing. Uh, marketing means you need to connect with uh, media in Ethiopia, uh, FM radios, uh, TV channels, uh, 
uh, there are different different uh, methods to reach uh, to the majority of the population i believe uh, and you need to do that because what you do is remarkable uh, the efforts are uh, really i know uh, how difficult this kind of things can be so i think you need to do a lot of marketing also uh, infographics graphical representation it needs to improve a little bit uh, it should be appealing uh, attracting uh, especially the youth um another uh, suggestion that i have for you is uh, make it mandatory for uh, yes members uh, to make a monthly uh, payment maybe 25 usd or 100 usd i don't know 50 usd it has to be uh, mandatory for everyone to contribute on a monthly basis because we have a shared vision uh, that's why we are sitting here and contributing and listening uh, and taking inspiration so that must be there uh, use another strategy, uh, for example, uh, TikTok uh, influencers. Uh, just uh, maybe we don't have to give uh, the content as it is. Uh, sometimes it needs uh, a little bit of, you know, according to what the market uh, requires. So maybe you need a lot of support from the youth. Uh, TikTok influencers also uh, try to use the uh, super chat uh, model, like uh, in, on YouTube when you go live. If someone uh, wants to comment and they will do, they'll give some uh, uh, money, then, you know, that will uh, help you to strengthen your financial uh, uh, well-being. So uh, definitely if you are financially well, you can recruit more people, you can create more platforms. Uh, that is the way forward. You can uh, support a lot of people. I thank you very much um, and I'll speak to you very soon. And thank you uh, everyone uh, for uh, your insights. Appreciate it. Thanks so much. Is it Fazil or sorry, I couldn't see your name. Yeah, oh yeah, Fazil. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, brother. Thank you, sir. See you. Good night. I'm, Thank you. I'm open. I'm open uh, but I those of you who read Amharic, by the way, Fazil have a book like Honoma Ganyet. He donated <laughs> this book to me and I met him. So I have a book that's signed by the author. So, and uh, uh, please buy this book and read. Uh, Fazil works uh, with uh, Haile. Haile Resorts is in, uh, uh, now in Dubai. And you also have a family here. Uh, most likely will be here in the US in a very short time. And now Fazil is working with Jonas also. Kind of we're building a family, a community. So, Brother Fazil, thank you so much. And yeah. for sure, this is going to yeah. be something I do after I finish my coursework during this spring semester. And yeah. uh, but I've gone through it like briefly, and one of like very handy kind of guides, especially for those who want to improve the service sector, the hotel industry, the hospitality industry. And Fazil also is planning to engage in a training mission. So uh, I already have discussion with uh, Jonas Agos. So brother Fazil, uh, keep up, and I thank you so much, and I took all the notes of the points you give me and uh, for sure would use it. Xavier still thank you, thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks so much. So uh yeah I see Dr. Mary Willis is still like maybe I'd uh I wish Alazar is here. Someone please call Alazar. I want to see him and he is our our uh, kind of maybe it's is it very late in Ethiopia? What time is it now? Since that on it, on end I'm sad. Okay, oh yeah, but I'm sure. Okay, uh, Telegram line, like shoot anyone on Telegram would like to ask, engage, and discuss. Please go ahead. Thank you. Hello, in the show, I cannot hear you. No, one minute. Okay, thank you uh, very much. Um, yep. Yeah. But I'm a the designer training which we got to do. Lenya Leo touching, but I'm saying to the honor now. Yeah. Nanda, I got a chin of Lamalan University. Okay. Lamalan University, but I'm married. And that's it. I'm here. Yeah. 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 Yeah, Lilo Chiminora, Bunga University, the Gurnam Tanya, the Mazakan, and Astamarina, Astamarina. So in a Lamacatalicus or Limus, 
ሁሌ ነው ለታሳፍ የነበረው እንደዚህ አይነት ነገሮች እንዲቀጥሉ ለማናገር ፈልየን ነው እግዚአብሔር ስትልኝ አመሰግናለሁ thank you ndasha from bonga university and uh, for sure degu one of your colleagues is an active member of yes ethiopia and uh, i also have some engagements with the university and please just keep meeting and joining our weekly sessions and we are very happy to have you with us is there any question i would be happy if dw could share with us uh, when she was able to collaborate with universities in ethiopia i'm asking if there were technical procedure she followed from the us side someone is asking you dw about yeah of course i remember the memorandum of understanding and the like but tell us more what it took you like to make it happen collaborating with ethiopian universities uh, i knew myself when you first met when you first came to awasa i i was a kind of that busy person and <laughs> yeah please tell us like how did that partnership start and well our, our first year again this was money from the u.s department of agriculture an international science education grant and the first year we we went to the um, home region of of dr bayana which is a wallow university and in south wallow and um i and then we also went to horror um and that also was a connection from one of the faculty at university of nebraska so we used our contacts that we that we had at the university and and um and made that connection i don't remember the there were some issues uh, at, at horror that year and um we decided to i decided to look at some other possibilities and i just looked on the internet for hawasa and i and i contacted the university there so um that that's how uh, that process started but our goal was to always as i said have have student connections and um you know ethiopia has so many unique features as an african country uh, more foods that are indigenous to the country than anybody else that's partly because colonization didn't take place and um or at least not completely and uh and and so there's so many things to study so many things to to maximize on and every university of course has uh, different kinds of experts and um and so that's that's how that relationship uh, uh began with hawasa is just me looking on the internet and writing to someone and um i i think that education abroad programs in universities around uh, the, the uh, us are very good places to Kind of strike up a, a relationship um, of all the universities in the u.s um, and all the students that study abroad there aren't very many uh, about 10 percent of all of our undergraduates from all universities combined ever study abroad and of that very small amount that studies abroad only three percent ever choose an african country so very few american students ever have a contact with africa mostly when they go they go to south africa so uh, that's you know something i've been um i've just been devoted and it's uh, again because of my dear colleague uh, from graduate school i wouldn't have necessarily learned about ethiopia or the joy of ethiopian coffee and food and people and music uh, without that dear friend and so um it's just a great place to study and learn so that that that's that's it fike Thanks so much. I don't know if the person asked got a complete answer. I'm also eating lunch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. There is also one other question in the chat uh, to you, Dr. Mary. Uh, the person says they were working on a research uh, related to coffee grading using AI. Uh, so I guess they're curious what type of support uh, for research that there's out there for this kind of research in the coffee sector? I am not a good person necessarily to answer that. Um, it's a very kind of, um, it, it's a very interesting concept and everything is is um, exploding around the world with AI. But as it relates to coffee, I'm not really sure. Fike, what, 
what would you say in the in that realm? Yeah, I think it's like it need to be a little, you know, AI using AI to um, grade coffee, which means you need a very good research facility, like mm -hmm. someone who wanted to start their own technology business. Whenever you come with an idea, just make sure does it need some infrastructure? Does it need some investment? Or is something I just use with my own available resources? So I would ask the same person maybe to explain what is their plan? How do they want to use AI? Because it's AI technology, maybe if it's something that you would install on your smartphone, an application and the like, can be doable. So what when you say AI, usually we enter like texts or the like or images. Are you planning to upload maybe image of coffee and then see how good it is? What is the plan? I want to know more about before I say like, who is the person? Maybe can they speak? Uh, yeah, let me see who asked. I think that was Sultan. Yeah, Sultan. Oh, Sultan is our active member. Please help Sultan, go ahead. Okay, yes. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for the nice presentation in general uh, uh, for the conference. So the coffee grading uh, using artificial intelligence, it is uh, uh, using image processing. Mm -hmm. So actually uh, did the research, I already finished it mm -hmm. uh, and it works so well. So uh, I deployed it using micro uh, controller, like mm -hmm. it is like a small, instead of a mobile application, it is like uh, an embedded systems like. Uh, uh, I don't know. It should, it should be technical so far. Yeah, so let me just make it understand for like people like me who's not from technology sector, so that yeah. we might connect you with another person, other people. Are you thinking of like using images of coffee taken by mobile technology, upload it to a given system, and then see if this coffee is good or not? Or is there a special machine made only for this purpose, which would do? coffee grading so what yeah. is which one is it yeah actually the general objective is to just automate the manual process of uh, coffee grading like for export standard coffees there is a coffee grading in the ethiopian coffee entity authority like there is grade one grade two or undergrade something like that so this machine will uh, uh give us the grade based on the image taken like as we said but it is not deployed on the mobile application but uh, it is uh, easily, it is like a machine, a mechanical one. So, oh, okay. yeah, it can be used in the coffee grading centers to automatically classify. Like, uh, if, uh, for example, if you have a, if you are a coffee exporter and if you going to know the grade of your coffee, uh, currently it is the, it has been done manually. So, mm -hmm. but using this machine, it can be done in seconds, like using. Uh, taking the image of the coffee and let it the uh, artificial intelligence model to process that image and give us a result. Yeah, so you is there a company producing this machine? Is your role no. making the machine or using the machine? Where where do you come in within the, the chain? I'm I'm, do, I'm, uh, I'm doing it for my masters in mechatronics engineering and I'm just exploring opportunities if I can do it like in real time, if I get funding requirements or something like that, funding opportunities. Yeah, I, I, I recommend you to present during our weekly sessions and let people comment on it. Uh, okay. I'm not from this sector. I can connect you with people working on coffee. And uh, uh, so I remember when Ashen Nafi first presented his business idea, he was planning to use drone technology to detect fertilizer deficiency in the maize farm, right? If I said it correctly. So uh, what the feedback we gave them was, who's producing the drone technology? Are you going to sell the drone or use the drone to make the service? You see, you, Sultan, ask yourself, where do you want to come in the chain of this? Are you going to be a producer of the machine? or you are going to be the person using the machine, okay? So 
just help me understand where do you want to you want to be on the side of producing the machine and sell it to the people who make coffee uh, or grading or you want to do the grading yourself someone is making the machine for you maybe you get paid for your service what is the the plan okay my role will be like producing the machine and uh, like accessibility to the market because most uh, like uh, coffee grading is done uh, mostly by the government sectors in Ethiopia. So I will give it to uh, for the government bodies or maybe for individuals like coffee traders for they went to track their uh, coffee grade in the process as well. Yeah, I would, I would present it during our weekly session because it's not yeah. my expertise. I don't want to mislead you, but that should be marketed. Use our platform to present more. Uh, today, if there is someone from technology background that would give him comment, I'm very happy to hear. But from my side, I recommend you to join the weekly sessions and then I can give you a platform where you present your idea. Okay. Okay. I will. Yeah. Thank you. We have a question from Devela. If you want to uh, unmute yourself. Okay, are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? We can yes. hear you. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, thank you. I want to thank uh, all of you. Uh, thank you for uh, giving me this great chance. Uh, <coughs> and these are nice progress that uh, we will uh, we are celebrating together. Um, okay, I'm Davala Alama from Jimma University. <laughs> And a volunteer contractor at uh, Yestopia, uh, Jimati. And I want to say something, right? I want to say something in the uh, since the time is gone, and uh, uh, I will wait at, up to the end. But I want to say something on the uh, 2024 plans in observing 2024 plans. It is amazing plans, and. <coughs> I hope we will do that uh, with the help of God. And my question is uh, for Fiki, my question is that uh, <clears throat> what the strategy uh, to coordinate those uh, plans? This is uh, not only for Fiki, this is for us also. Uh, this is uh, for, uh, for, for, for clarification. And my question is uh, what's the strategy to coordinate those plans in cooperative ways? Uh, to, to, to get the nice knife nice uh, output so so how how the responsibility is shared to implement those plans so <clears throat> in planning and the first also there has to be <clears throat> the coordinators and also the facilitator has to be decided so on this one if, if you reflect uh, I'm we may in the, we may <clears throat> participate in the in in particular i think thank you yeah thanks so much brother Devala. i really appreciate what you do in uh, organizing the team in jimma jimma university now if someone asks me do you know someone in jimma i would say Devala is there right because i've seen you being active trying to help trying to grow and i see your academic potential gold medalist so brother what we do uh, our plan is like with the Ethiopia mission in each region would have at least an internship, someone who would be employed and then have a clear plan that would report to us based on, uh, let's say, uh, having a clear team of people and then plan activities specific to your area and then show us executing those activities. And uh, as you know, our major target is getting jobs for unemployed students, graduates. So a team in Jimma, for example, would have, let's say, how many students can get, should we try to help to get job per year? And then where are they? And where are they meeting? Who are they? Which field of study? And then are they taking our training? Are they involved in volunteer activities? We need to kind of be working forward with that to expect uh, an offer from our side for to your team it can be just two days a week one day a week 
paid engagements for leading what you do. We this is one of the observations I've seen that a lot of young people are willing to work. Some of them maybe they don't have uh, the money to join our weekly sessions. So we need to make sure at least you have access to the internet. So for the, this is specifically for the regional focus. At least would buy internet package from Ethiopia, and then we try to compensate your time as a focal, and then you, we give you a plan of activity you need to deliver to us so that we keep growing. Now it's just here and there. No one is paid, no one is accountable to what we do. We understand because we didn't pay for those services. We don't want to be really harsh on or kind of just demanding a lot. Now I already started, for example, paying a little bit of pocket money in areas far from Addis Ababa, right? So Jimma for sure welcoming also to the others. And that's specific to your area, to Jimma. Addis Ababa region will have one employed person. Awasa regional focal is already assigned and we also negotiated with the salary and she already started working. Her name is Ruth and she's helping me in kind of walk things forward than just uh, here and there. So there is a plan on the US side for sure. We're asking fundraising and all these things, this kind of events, for example. Now we started, we need to come again and be consistent, right? If you just light here and then disappear, you are kind of misleading people. In Ethiopia, one of the things that we want to do, like weekly sessions, for example, we have been meeting every day for a year. And every week. So we want to do this conference also again and again, maybe if we are really good enough, once in six months, and speak to big organizations. And then bring more like what Fasil just said is very important. Let's say I need someone to work on TikTok. But they should be also be clear about how they work with Yes Ethiopia. When you are working with Yes Ethiopia, you need to also understand the values and the ethics we are promoting. If today you are discussing about Yes Ethiopia and tomorrow you are discussing something very political, you are confusing people. Right? That, so you try to maintain the ethics and the values of Ethiopia and also grow with us and have a strategy, especially if people have plans, their own plans, that's the easiest to work with. I have this plan from Ethiopia, but what's your plan, Devala? What's your plan, uh, Sultan? What's your plan, Lemmy? That's how we go together. You see, let my plan and your plan, the Ethiopia team and your, your ideas, kind of online is very easy for us to work together. So uh, yeah, I think it answers the specific question I am to answer for you is what I said. We'll have people employed for every region. It can be one day a week, and then they will have a plan, they'll deliver that. So there is mission for, let's say it's uh, United States. I think that's like something to be done here. I don't think need to explain that to you. You as a regional leader in Jimma, Think of what should I plan about so that I help unemployed students in Jimma. That's you and your team. Then what support do you need financially in terms of technical and other things? We do our best to get those support come to your brother. And so, yeah, let me know if the question is not, I mean, the answer is not clear. I can't go very specific, but I thought that's really like in line with the uh, team of gym mind regional focals hmm? thank you thank you thank you for your, your response yeah. i have I get all the things this already i've, I've asked for uh, more clarification for the or the may, maybe new new members so yeah exactly you. that's very good because it will help me when you ask you know the others also get the answer so uh, again a reminder all the regional focals it's not about number of people it's rather about consistency. If you are five people, I need five people consistently working together to establish something stronger in Jimma or in Adama or in Walaita Sodor in Baharda. Wherever you are, think of who is it that I work with? What is the role I play within my community? 
and then what support I need from Yes Ethiopia. That makes it easier for us to work together. And I said this again and again and again, the major problem I face from our young people, that they come and they go. Yamralu, yakwaratalu. Devala, maat te yamru yitha kwaratas ral nagri chalal. Maat. Na, hi lanya la masrat fat ames chagrana. When people just start and stop, man. The Zandahon, the Rafa, I think session almost Yan Lekarian now. Megam Salamanikanai, Lilatiak Kalatequi, Kalone and Miss Gauna. The Yakis, I hope, okay. I think Ashenafi and Alazar are also here. Oh, Alazar is here? Wow. Alazar, when do me? I'm sorry. I didn't see you. Alex, like Dr. Mary Willis was speaking. And uh, we wanted to hear from you. I think she left now. Um, but let let people hear from you, Alex. If you can hear me. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Our big boy is here. And then there's another way. Darling. Darling, Doctor Mary Willis, ka arif kizay na bara na. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't able to attend the entire meeting, but I was coming on and off. So mm -hmm. I, I I had some of the discussions. And uh, my name is Alazar Kirubil, and I'm from Hawassa University. Uh, human nutrition program coordinator and I have been uh, working with FICA for more than five years now so I was there when he first started Yes Ethiopia uh, in Lincoln in 2020 I guess I guess the first month of 2020 all right so uh and with dr willis uh i have been doing the study abroad program with dr willis since 2015. um she she brought students to ethiopia for a study abroad program and i've been helping her organize uh, all the things that are going to be done with the program and so that's how we meet with dr willis and also on the coffee project that we work with uh, Fuge, Amaru, and Dr. Willis. So, I mean, it has been uh, a, a very, a very uh, grateful experience uh, to meet and work with Dr. Willis and the team in general, Fuge and Amaru. And so we, it's not just uh, the career opportunity that uh, we get when we meet uh, people from the other side of the world uh, through networks. Uh, I mean, we can also, you know, get to learn you know, the way of life, uh, things and different things and even hobbies. I mean, uh, I, I, I know this may sound silly, but I didn't know anything about birds before I met Dr. Willis and, and now she converted me to a bird watcher and now uh, I know all the bird species that are in my areas and I even know when the bird is about to poop now. So that's something that she can learn from people because and, and also for scholars and uh, people that, have, that has been making a speech in this uh, meeting earlier today. So uh, you can influence and inspire the, the users in, you know, in other areas in Ethiopia or a, a, anywhere in the world. So that's something to take note of, uh, I think. So, and I, and I believe like, uh, and I believe in people like, like I believe in Mr. Fugaru, I believe in Professor Barbara, I believe in Professor Mary. I mean, uh, the things they have done to help people, the things they have done to change people's life, uh, there's not there's not much a system that is built that has done better. I mean, 
uh, Fegadu has helped loads and loads of users in Ethiopia. I mean, for the betterment of their lives. Professor Barbara, Professor Mary Willis. So I think uh, individual efforts are, I mean, very crucial and such networking will enable people to to get access and get opportunity to know people and uh, learn from them. So, okay, I think that's uh, that's what I have in mind. Do you want me to say about anything in particular, maybe? Yes, you know, yeah, I know. I wish you mentioned about your physical activity routines <laughs> a little bit because that's like we it's overlooked but when you mm. see the non-communicable diseases uh, what it means to be physically active is uh, uh it's a lot also you know i learned that from you uh, <laughs> that, <laughs> yeah we <laughs> are still very behind especially with the u.s uh, way of life <laughs> uh, well, the study abroad piece, you know, one of the plans yeah. for Ethiopia in 2024 uh, is mm -hmm. the reward we give to uh, the African diaspora youth like Sosna, Matthios, yeah. and those who was born here and maybe had only one or twice visit to Ethiopia. And maybe mm -hmm. they didn't see, they didn't go to like South Omo or not Nechisar or not Arbamench or all those places mm -hmm. that we have been going with uh, students in. Yeah. Uh, Zambia and the like. So give us a hint, like what should we do better than your experience to have a successful uh, exchange program, visit to Ethiopia? That's like Sosna and her uh, likes can enjoy and you know learn from that. So what should we keep in mind? Yeah, I think uh, uh, I think everybody would agree with this the best way to learn is to just go to a place and get you know, uh, a full-on experience from the place itself. So I think uh, the best way to do that uh, through the study abroad program is, you know, to find, to find maybe a study area or a study interest that they, they want to know more about. Right, so uh, in most of the study abroad programs that we do with Dr. Willis, it focuses on education, nutrition, health, and food security. So we 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 take students to for a market inventory to see what foods are available for the community and what kind of health service they get in the area what kind of uh, school they go to and what do they learn in a school. So so most of the students that are coming from the States uh, will have their own individual interest areas and we we make sure that they get the they they get all the information all and all the access uh, in order to you know uh, conduct their research and get some findings and understand the scenarios and also the cultural experience is uh you know pr uh, priceless uh we we took students for uh for a visit in the south 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 omo where they see uh different tribes i mean it's a whole different story it's a whole different story of, and lifestyle and sorry so so, and I, I think uh, the, the, the first place to start is finding your interest and, and then go from there. So I would say that would be the first thing to do. Yeah, thanks so much. Most likely, uh, Brother Aralazar, you're gonna be one of uh, the resource people we reach out to as we kind of have a plan and then list of applicants you could mentor them share them your experiences maybe join them on the trip depending on where you would be in the coming one year so just keep in mind it's one of our uh, rewards we give for Sosna and those uh, young people in us yeah. who are working for Ethiopia now there are two Sosna and uh, Matthias Matthias was born here 
uh, Dr. Martha's uh, son. Also, so since both are on yes, Ethiopia board oh. members. Uh, I'm also bringing one Eritrean. She's here in Nebraska and uh, she's very happy to work with me. She's a studying undergraduate. Well, we are thinking about five to 10, maybe first court would come to either to Ethiopia or to Kenya, to Zambia. And maybe we might also team yeah. up with Dr. Mary Willis. And um, we have you in yeah. mind. So I just wanted to really like uh, <clears throat> hear from you today. It's a bit a very long session. And uh, sorry for yeah. not, you know, uh, being on the time with you when you were in, you know, someone yeah. uh, changed their mind and then they couldn't make after we made the agenda ready. Yeah. They said, oh, I can't come in the morning, then I'll be in the afternoon. And then we have technology yeah. problems with yeah. Dr. Stoker and then you're on and off. So, yeah, thanks so much. And uh, uh, we'll keep engaging yeah. and we'll, we'll ask you. And yeah, uh, yeah and we are proud of you. You're a young talent, you know, you have an equivalent here, uh, Abi mm -hmm. and uh, Sosinna and Devela. These are gold medalists. These are like the best of best, you know? And uh, yeah, yeah, but I'm here for you. 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 I'm here and tagam yaw sos netub zetein samsing yaw yaw dali yaw yaw setano na na anta lenya but anta lik hap tinda hona chu <hesitation> bedem bende tas taulu ma anba ta kababiu inda za in kare jila hara ga chu jila vali vali a chu yem mea yim a habara sa bus tila tonu tila na chu na gargan <hesitation> na anta na chu <hesitation> yaw 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 da fit tas fa chile na please guys bar tu na nya ta neshe na anda neshe ba o chia Barem ya bazalu, and then nemi. Kuta ni bazalu na. I know it can be boring. Allah sali TikTok lai. Miasik negar iza iza na ablo inya. Ni thabati argin na mas kalau kum. And kan ya abdu alma balai karam publicly for name shower loss di noh. It's to be alma talk. Wai bakit terse samuna fitin dah tak belo alai babarakina. Absi. What we do in uh, Alex with our son, Gina Los Lamata, Lila and Do, a substate at Lachu, La Lazarum, the name or La Sosuna, a Marek Macrap Tichira Lachu, Zusat Kuchibra Nalina, so seem but I'm the Kumarhal, the Swam Raftimus at Faligalo. Na Ashenavi uh, is asking to speak, Ashe, please. <coughs> Navi, the <coughs> ambassador. <laughs> Go ahead, Thank please, Ashe. Uh, yeah, thank you, Alazar, for uh, replying to our uh, text message. I really appreciate. Uh, I just wanna to invite all of our today's attendant, especially for women at this. Uh, please come. Uh, we will. Uh, I will be assured that we will have a great conference uh, in person. Uh, there are a lot of viewers who will attend this program. So this is to again invite. Uh, in our in-person conferences, uh, there is also what makes it different is especially there is a business startup competition, as you know. Uh, yeah, you will see, you can uh, discuss with uh, startup co-founders. Uh, maybe you who knows there is a way that you can collab with them or uh, there is a way that uh, we, you, you, can, you can use their service or their products. So I, I think it is, uh, it will be a good networking time for all of us to know each other's and uh, yeah, uh, to feel like a family. Uh, so this is to again, invite you to attend our in-person conferences. Thank you for it. Thank you so much. Shanafi will join you tomorrow also. So try to have, for those of us far from uh, this, a kind of a Zoom session for someone just sitting there and uh, sharing on Facebook still helps. And uh, thanks so much for what you're doing, for being an inspiration. And all of you, I really thank you so much. Uh, let's end here. And then Dr. Barakat, if you are there, you might close the session. Uh, I think we are done from my side. So, Sinna, do you like to add anything? 
from the organizer side unless we might close the link uh thank you for uh i think we've done a really great work thank you for thank you everybody that organized it thank you everyone that came uh we've included uh linkedin links to our uh, presenters from today if you want to connect with them or ask any follow-up questions we've also included yesito2020 at gmail.com for any questions that weren't answered so please uh, send uh, your questions there um, and yes please join the in-person uh, conference tomorrow if you are able uh, thank you Asha Nafi and the uh, yesito team for all the work that you did to make that happen uh, we're super excited, and that's all I have. Thanks so much. So is Dr. Barakat there? Uh, yeah, I need to just close the session. Thank you so much, Xavier Sterling. That was a good love. Now, and is a good town. I hope Dr. Barakat is there. Thank you. Thank you. Ciao, ciao. Well, thank you. Thank you, Xavier Stanley. Thank you, thank you, Chair. It's a lovely day. Have a nice time. Have a nice time, all of you. Bye. Thank you so much. Ciao.